still alive for one of the slots in the championship game. Crucial collision. Hokies control the destiny. Miami must win out and hope that North Carolina loses over in the Atlantic. Wake Forest holds the tiebreak edge over Florida State. A big ball game as the Seminoles host Boston College this weekend. Anybody's game in the ACC. And we know one thing tonight, Miami and Virginia Tech need this one badly. Thanks for joining us. Chris Fowler, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, Aaron Andrews will join us. Well, let's start with the Canes. They got the four-game winning streak. It's their final home game, and most people realize the future, Craig, of this program is very good. But it's so young. Is this a team ready to arrive this year? We may find out a lot about that tonight. Now they got a couple of different trigger men out there that are responsible for the growth of this team on the field. Randy Shannon's doing his job as the head football coach, but tonight you're going to see two different type quarterbacks. Robert Marv and Ja'Cory Harris are both athletic and talented. They both can move their football team down the field. They'll go back and forth, and whoever gets the hot end, he stays in the football game. It'll be a basic offense, but trust me, these guys can make plays down the field. They got a good, talented football team. It's going to be a challenge for Virginia Tech. Coming in here to this house, they're ready. They're it rocking. Harris ready. making the plays. This is a huge win for Miami at Virginia, their last game. They came back tied in a regulation, went in overtime. It was Harris making the plays. For the Hokies, Jesse, they're a little more predictable. We kind of know what to expect from Virginia Tech, don't we? We do. You know, they haven't been overly explosive on offense this year, but they did break out last week against Maryland to the tune of 400 yards, and they got the majority of that production from their outstanding freshman running back, Darren Evans. Evans ran for a school record 253 yards in that game. He has all the physical tools you look for in a running back. Great speed, good vision, great toughness, great balance as well, and he runs behind a very big, very physical offensive line. Now, that unit has a big test tonight heading into a game against the Miami defense, and then six of their games this year have held their opponent to under 100 yards rushing. So, we know we're going to see Sean Glennon tonight. We think we might see Tyrod Taylor as well. This team has not had a lot of production from the quarterback position this year. Virginia Tech has to be able to run the ball tonight if they want to win. Now there's Glennon. You see him. These guys beat up on the Canes a year ago in Blacksburg. They won four out of the last five, and here come the Hurricanes. Tradition of holdover from the old days of the Orange Bowl. Frankly, they're never going to have that same kind of electricity in Dolphin Stadium where they haven't had close to a sellout. This is a night when they honor the past at Miami. The Ring of Fame will have five new members, but the future on display here, a team that includes 31, 31 true freshmen. There's Jimmy Johnson. He's here to salute some of the Ring of Fame Honorees. Aaron Andrews right down there on that field has more on the, the four quarterbacks we're going to see tonight. Aaron? Yeah, Chris, you guys be sharp in the booth tonight. Four quarterbacks we will see in this matchup. As Jesse just mentioned, we will see senior Sean Glennon and sophomore Tyrod Taylor play a quarterback for the Hokies tonight. Now, I was just told moments ago on the sidelines that Glennon will be the starter for Virginia Tech, and they said the situation will dictate when they put Tyrod Taylor in. I spoke with Tyrod during warm-ups. He said he's fine. He's ready to go. He's 100%, but Hokies head athletic trainer Mike Gofor said they really won't know how strong that left ankle is until he gets in the game. But they said as soon as he gets in there, they'll be able to tell right away if he's good to go. Yeah, he's been hampered by injuries for Frank Beamer all season long, injured in the first play against Florida State. Beamer, 9 and 8 versus Miami. Of course, these rivals go back to the days in the Big East, and it's continued in the ACC where the Hokies have had the upper hand on Miami. Year two for Randy Shannon. We know he's hit the recruiting trail hard. He's in the middle of another good recruiting class. Many didn't know what to expect this season. Tremendous youth on this team. So many key contributors on both offense and defense are true freshmen. Guys who were in high school, many of them local high schools, just a year ago. Well, Randy Shannon's done a nice job of bringing in young guys and getting them ready to go. Who's this here? What's this? Uh, okay. Fowler, okay. We sparkle for Chris Fowler. They're dressed up for you, CF. A small but ardent fan club. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Enough said there. Let's uh, let's kick this thing off and see which team's going to have the upper hand. And it'll be Miami booting it away. Hokies will get the football first, and right away we'll see whether or not it's Taylor or Glennon. 
Well, That's Frank Beamer said that it would depend on the play they want to run. Now, last week, this football team, Virginia Tech, ended on a strong note running the ball, Sean Glennon. But they do believe in Tyrod Taylor and what he does in opening up. It's be a challenge against a very athletic defensive line at Miami tonight. It's Matt Bosher who handles the kicking and the punting for the Hurricanes. A sophomore to kick it away. Dyrell Roberts is number 11. He's a dangerous kick return man. Brought one back 55 yards. So we could go tonight against Maryland, and this is going to be Roberts at the 15. And pretty good Miami coverage after this short kickoff, and the Hokies will take over at the 28. And let's see which quarterback trots out there. It's going to be Sean Glennon. So Glennon, the senior from Centerville, Virginia, really played on a bad ankle, gutsy effort in the comeback win over Maryland last week. And he played well in that game. Went 14 of 20, threw a touchdown pass. Wasn't asked to do anything extensive in terms of throwing the ball downfield, but managed the game extremely well. And there is Mr. Evans. 32 carries a week ago for 253. They fake it to him. Then it will throw in the first play, looking downfield, and that's Danny Cole, a diving catch near midfield. Worked in front of Chevis Grant, the junior who gets the start at cornerback to pick up 21. This is a great play call by Brian Steins from the offensive corner. They get into a very vanilla look, and after that big game from Darren Evans last week, Miami expecting Bontek to come out running the ball. He put it up with play action to get a big play right off the bat. And right off the bat, Tyrod Taylor comes in the, in the huddle. So this is a very multiple offense that we'll see tonight. Throwing from Glennon, running from Taylor. Oh, they better have some throwing from Taylor, too, or it's going to get pretty predictable. This is a run from Evans, and you'll get just a yard. Check out the impact players for the Hokies offense. We mentioned Darren Evans ran for a school record 253 yards last week against Maryland. The big question is, can he pick up where he left off here tonight? And will Tyrod Taylor's ankle be strong enough and healthy enough to allow him to get outside a very, very athletic and quick defensive line? Victor, a.k.a. Macho Harris, will be... A lockdown corner. He's got four picks this year, but also it involved him on offense. How many snaps will he be able to go? He's in there right now. And it's Taylor. Took a quick look downfield. So has the ball and fires to a wide open Cole along the sidelines. They left him alone and he's shoved out at the 25 by Anthony Reddick. This is exactly the challenge for Bill Young's defense tonight. Miami has to use their eyes. Tyrod Taylor, when he's in the game, Jesse, when he breaks the pocket, somebody in the linebacker level has to be responsible for him that pulls up somebody to open up the receiver. It's just the added dimension that an athletic quarterback can bring your offense. When the pocket collapses, they can get outside and create. Tyrod Taylor is showing you a very nice example of that right there. So two completions as Glennon returns. Two completions to Cole, totaling 44 yards. It's Evans. Skips back to his left, gets about five. It's a Miami defense that certain games this season has really been on its heels early on. Bill Young kind of gets it going. They're much better defense in the second half. And we're going to see basically 22 different players playing tonight. I like that team concept. Well, they have a lot of depth. They've got a lot of youth, but a lot of depth. They're on the big difference between the starters and the backups, so they can keep guys fresh for 60 minutes. This is Evans on second and five. Not much room. Hurricane rush defense. It's 24th in the country. 15th in total defense. But they've got to really rotate their defensive linemen. They're an athletic group that moves around a lot. This defense will put pressure on a big Virginia Tech offensive line. Can the big guys ooze onto that D line? First third down of the night for the Hokies. They need three. It's Glennon in there. Little option look. Glennon keeps it. And he's dropped near the first down marker by Marcus Robinson, the true freshman linebacker. It'll be fourth and about a yard. I guarantee when that play got put in this week, with Sean Glennon running it, the key was to pitch the football. That play was not designed. Oh, come on. I'm Sean Glennon oh, running. His ankle's still not 100%. We're going to give Miami a lot of credit for taking the pitch away and forcing Sean Glennon to have to beat them on that play. Ballard thinks Glennon's a great runner every once in a yeah, while, right? right? 
Maybe only, not. only only as a, a change of pace when the defense isn't expecting it. <laughs> We're going to go on fourth down here. Two fullbacks, Devin Perez, Kenny Jefferson, Andre Smith is the tight end, and there's Evans. Evans hit behind the line, didn't get it. They're signaling first down. He did not get there. Glenn Cook filled. And a stout response by Miami's D-line. Left guard Nick Marshman, who had a heck of a game last week, pulls around and tries to create an opening at the point of attack. But that very athletic, leverage-style defense under the pass. Just too much push. That D-line doing a very nice job staying low, getting a lower pad level, able to push that big physical Virginia Tech line back, stone them. And now they get the football back here early in the game. Cook is their leading tackler. Not the greatest athlete, but a nose for the ball when he found it there. And a, a spark for Robert Marv, who started quarterback for Miami. Greg Cooper coming off the big game against Virginia, ran for 131 yards. Here's the tailback. Travis Benjamin comes in motion, and they give it to Cooper. He gets just a couple. Impact players for the Hurricanes, guys. Well, Miami's best offensive lineman, Jason Fox, will not go tonight. So Reggie Youngblood gets the start at left tackle. He's got a big challenge tonight facing Orion Martin for Virginia Tech at the end. Don't scare me as a running back. Craig Cooper now, without that lineman up there, he better have the vision and the cuts that he's shown in the past. Travis Benjamin, a buck 62, skinny, true freshman. He's got eight plays of 30 plus yards. The rest of the team combined has 12. He's a playmaker, number 80. On second and seven, they give it to Cooper again, dancing, fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage. Brett Warren, the linebacker, was there. Here's a Virginia Tech defense. We saw it live last week, guys. They held then the leading rusher in the ACC, Darrell Scott, to only 11 yards. They held Maryland to minus 12 yards rushing. So it is critical tonight and the Miami's able to run the ball. And when we think about the ACC, 10 of the 12 teams, as you said, still viable for the championship. I'm starting to look for defenses. I want to see who has the defense capable in the ACC of winning the championship. <laughs> Offense is a problem in this league, my friend. They got, they got a lot of defenses. Third and seven for Marv. The fire left side has a man coming back to make the catch in the low ball for a first down is Chris Zellner, the tight end. One of the... Actually, now they're going to rule incomplete. It was a low throw, but he got under it. Let's check it out. Well, Marv has someone underneath trying to pull under. See if he gets his hands under this ball. No, no he didn't. Did. That's Good a ball. missed opportunity because Virginia Tech dropped eight players. There weren't a lot of windows to throw it. As Miami players, they know they need to make those plays when given the opportunity. Okie's running 11th man in the punt block team. It's Macho Harris deep. Bosher gets it away. Harris makes the third catch at the 34-yard line. Dokies take over. The second possession. 45 yards on the line. A man is only as good as the car he drives. Take care of the car, the car will take care of you. On November 26th. Anything I should know? When you go past 75 feet from the car. Complete the mission. Save your life. Do it! Frank, where are you? In the lake. Can you be more specific? Jason Statham. Fasten your seatbelt. Transporter 3. Rated PG-13. In the US, November 26th. Rated T. The ACDC Live Rock Band Track Pack. 18 of ACDC's biggest songs. Get it exclusively at Walmart. Available now. Seat movers. That's what you'd call us. We'd buy seats up in the nosebleeds and then move down. We'd look for no-shows. Who sometimes did show. Soda spillers. That is going to leave a stain. Go, 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 and then go. we'd swoop right in for the perfect seats. Hello. And goodbye. Want great seats? Your city card could get them. And now, every time you use a participating city card, you're in it for a chance to go on a three-city tour with Nickelback. Want the story of a lifetime? Your city card can help you write it. You've done your research. We went on cars.com, we compared models side by side, and I didn't have to resort to plan B. Oh, what's plan B? I was gonna have you eat these brownies, which I mixed with a horse laxative. 
excuse me. My husband kind of has a sweet tooth. Okay, Tommy. Beep, hey, Nancy's phone. Nancy doesn't have AT&T, so no bars here. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting the call about how Freddy the fun-loving dinosaur's costume was damaged. Apparently, they're singing T-Rex. Yeah, we missed that call. For the best coverage, switch to AT&T. More bars in more places. Get an exclusive quick messaging phone for $79.99 after mail-in rebate. We're twins, so we do a lot of stuff together, including watching football. Oh, come on! Intentional grounding? Like most twins, we're not exactly the same. You see, Dave's a yeller. Yes! Enter it! Who's he throwing it to? You just have to learn how to cope. Oh, Did you see that? Clearly, the NFL. That's how I see it. The new 120 hertz Samsung Series 8. When motion clarity means everything, imagination lives. See their whole story at Samsung.com. It'll be the Eagles visiting the Seminoles. This is your EA Sports simulation. You can see the real thing in primetime on ASP or ABC presented by Southwest Airlines. BC and Florida State. Some of you will see Oklahoma State visiting the Buffaloes. Let's talk more about this. ACC race as we go on. There's Jimmy Johnson. Is he ready for the, the challenge there? He's got the red flag in hand. <laughs> Bill Parcells also here tonight. So this is Lennon, and we'll see apparently these guys alternate all night and do a lot of this, handing off to Evans, but the Canes are ready for number 32 tonight. They saw the tape of last week. You've got a really big offensive line and there's no question the challenge tonight unlike last week against Maryland for Virginia Tech is can they handle look at how fast they get off the line here the defense is fast and quick well that's that's the key because they're not very big when you go down on the field you take a look at that linebacking unit from Miami you are not blown away at all but one thing they are they are very fast Taylor in the game in the shotgun on second and nine and a bunch, four wide in the left of the formation. Taylor looks right there, flips it out to Cole. His third catch of the night. And Cole barrels ahead for about seven. JoJo Nicholas on the stop, but will set up a third short. You know, I, I think Beamer's done a heck of a job of coaching this season. But being able to rotate these quarterbacks and keep everybody happy and to get the opportunity. Look here, what a great setup, Jesse, for Cole to get the ball. We used to call that a diamond formation, how they set that up. But Danny Cole playing a big role so far in this game. The coaches told us as a freshman, he's maybe their most consistent wide receiver. Yeah, he's a redshirt freshman who's considered the veteran of the bunch. Comes from a coaching background. His dad is the strength coach at VMI. It's Taylor on third and two. Kane show pressure as Taylor rolls to his right. Flips it downfield. Complete. And that's a first down to Jared Boykin. Reddick didn't like the call, but they're giving him 40. He may not have liked the call, but I guarantee you, Virginia Tech loves seeing this. When you get Taylor outside the pocket and he has accuracy, that's double whammy on the defense. Look at the strong hands again by oh, Jared Boykin. No, that's a wait drop. Wait a second. They have to. Let's see. Turn up. <laughs> this will get overturned. Yeah, the crowd just saw it in the board here. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he turned up field, fellas, but I'm not sure that he had enough time with the ball in possession. Did Jimmy throw the flag out there? <laughs> well, so is. He still, well, got, still it. got it. He still got it, but he wanted to chunk it. You like that that NFL thing with the red flag thrown out there in the field? I don't like that system. Particularly. I like it when they can really throw it far out there. Sometimes yeah. they'll just kind of take it out of the pocket and they just kind of dump it on the sideline. But sometimes you'll see the coach get the crow hop. Out and of we'll disgust, get the they'll yeah. fire that thing. And they, get, they just fire that thing out there. I like it. 17 yard play hanging in the balance from our first review of the evening. Again, Jared Boykin, true freshman. We talked last week. He's got really big hands. He wears 3X size receiver gloves. So you expect him to come down with this. His biggest asset is his strong hands. You know, the big question is, did he have enough possession before that got knocked out? And I don't I don't think he did. I think this will be turned over. But when you talk about receivers, young receivers out there today, when I don't you know. get the ball, I, 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 don't know I don't know. He turned up the field, but did he have it long enough, Chris? I don't know that he had it long enough in, in his turn. Good job at Reddick to punch that football out. Yeah, but you guys, I was going to say, tuck the football. As soon as you get it, tuck it. Don't admire it. Don't roll it. Tuck the football. 
comes the verdict. After review, the pass is incomplete. So a great job by Reddick to punch that ball out just a split second in the eyes of the officials before Boykin could secure it. I agree with that call. Now that's two big missed opportunities from both sides of the field on third down. So it's fourth and two. Rick Bowden. Hunter will come out. Normally reliable Hokie special teams have been misfiring a bit. They had a punt partially blocked by Maryland a week ago. Of course, in the opening game of the season, they lost a game on a block punt for a touchdown by East Carolina in the last couple of minutes. Very dangerous, speedy, true freshman Travis Benjamin is back to return it. Very low, ugly kick. Benjamin had to slam the brakes on to avoid running into the football, and it'll roll dead about the 23. So, we don't know what quarterback we'll see, but hands to get the ball, we know that when we come back. For the price of a night in, how about a night out? Introducing Applebee's two for 20 menu. Full on dinner for two people for 20 bucks. Choose one great appetizer to share and two amazing entrees, like our juicy seven ounce sirloin, our signature double crunch shrimp, and so much more. So take your wife or your sister. Sure, take him. It's Applebee's two for 20, and it's the best meal and the best deal in the neighborhood. You know, scientific tests have proven that when you drink Dr. Pepper slowly, the 23 flavors taste even better. Hey, I get it, because half my life's been in slow motion. Watch this. Slower is better. Trust me, I'm a doctor. That was Dr. right there. They say good things come to those who wait. What do they know? Why wait when you can get the Yamaha ATV or Yamaha Rhino of your choice right now? The Yamaha Why Wait sales event. Now get payments as low as $69 a month till 2011 and up to $500 customer cash. The 24-7 market at Courtyard. More choices, more convenience, and more freedom on the road. Courtyard, it's a new stay. Today, the battle between good and evil begins on DVD and Blu-ray. Now stay down! From the visionary director of Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, crap. Hellboy 2. Own the three-disc special edition for a limited time today. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Football's rough. Your commute shouldn't be. So get you there on Goodyear. Silent armor technology. Canes take over after gaining three yards on their first possession. They'll take over at the 24 midway first quarter. What we expected. The defense is dominating so far. And this is Marv still in. A first down throw. Chase now. And he'll throw it out of bounds. Brunel Sturdivant, the linebacker, applied the pressure. You know, one of the things that a quarterback that's young, and I watched him in the spring, the receivers worked with him well in the spring, but they got to work. We say this week in and week out. Receivers have to work to give an option for the quarterback. And you don't see anybody play side, Jesse. Well, you saw left tackle Reggie Youngblood again filling in for Jason Fox, but getting walked back into that pocket a little bit. That's a matchup that we need to keep our eyes on as this game progresses. Empty backfield, Craig Cooper, the running backs in the slot down here. Marv looks left, 
quickly tucks it up. He's a pretty good runner. And he gets across the 30 before Sturdivant stops him. Got seven. Interesting. That's a designed run. Left guard pulled around. That's a designed quarterback run. Mark's got some athletic ability, and he's shown that he can take a strong hit. And that was a perfect play call in that situation because, once again, Virginia Tech dropping eight people. One of the defensive linemen drop out into coverage, which really makes it soft up front, which is ideal when you're running these quarterback draws. He's got that a 43-yard run against Wake Forest. Very nice run. run by a quarterback in yeah. quite a while here. So it's third and three. Again, Cooper in the slot, empty backfield. Okie's not showing pressure. And they rush just four. Marv steps up. He's going to get the first down and a lot more. 15 yards, Craig Cooper in the back there, pretty good block there. Frank Beaver hit the deck on the far sideline. But Foster shows four and he has the fire zone. You're going to see the middle of the field dropping out, which is going to take away the crossing route. Marv sees this. See it, Jesse, in his eyes there? So now he's going to take off. Lost his crossing route. Well, again, they dropped those eight players. Robert Marv is going to have to do this. When the defense drops eight like that and the windows get small, Robert Marv or Ja'Cory Harris have to make this team pay for dropping players in a coverage. High formation. Hill, the fullback in front of Cooper. Three-yard game. We do expect to see Javaris James has been really suffering with a high ankle sprain, a serious one that he, he got when they lost to the Gators up in the swamp. You know, we talk a lot about Darren Evans on a career day last week against Maryland, running for 253 yards. Well, Greg Cooper coming off a career day as well last week against Virginia running for 131 yards in that game, but we are going to see Jabari's James in this game as yeah, well. Yeah, but Coach Robinson, his running back coach, told me he's about 85%. He will play, but that high ankle is going to bother him some. They don't heal easily, those high ankle yeah. sprains, do they? Marv rolls out again, flips it short. Cooper fighting to midfield. Got just about a yard and a half before Nikos Brown tracked him down. Do you guys get the feeling that Virginia Tech's defense is playing a little faster, especially over the last two weeks? Well, they looked very, very impressive last week. There's no question about that, but they're very hungry. And Bud Foster told us he's been really on these guys the last couple of weeks. They had lost two games in a row against Boston College and Florida State heading into last week. He's had to stay on them the last couple of weeks now. It's Javaris James in the ballgame for the first time. He's in the slot to the right of Marv now in third and five. Okies show pressure and bring it. Marv gets it away, lobbing it downfield and coming back, not making the catch is Travis Benjamin. Marv hit and a flag. And Ryan Martin in the flag for roughing the passer, but Benjamin had a chance to make a big play. Personal foul. Would have been tacked on Benjamin. Very catchable ball. Craig, you talked earlier about how tough Robert Marv is and how his ability to stay in the pocket and deliver footballs downfield. You're going to see him right here. Wade in. He knows he's going to get hit, but he steps into that throw. What? I don't think. That's, that's not That's a, 15 yards. That's huh? terrible. But I tell you what is terrible is the fact Travis Benjamin doesn't finish this playoff. you got to make the play. The guy's got a lot of speed, but at some point, get down there and finish it off. He did make a, a move to the outside shoulder, but that just popped right off the shoulder pad. Ball move to the 35 now, and Cooper and James both in the backfield now. They fake the reverse, and Marv takes off. Flinging it downfield toward the pylon. Jump ball incomplete. That was James testing that ankle, going deep, but he was well covered by Cam Martin. Tricky look there. Huh? Yeah, you know, it is tricky. And you know what they're doing here is they're trying to figure out Patrick Nix, the coordinator, how he can get that defense at Virginia Tech to slow down a little bit. They're all over the place, but they're doing, again, nice coverage here. Well, Miami had the defense dialed up they wanted. They had man to man. They're trying to hit the running back on a wheel route, but you see the athleticism by Cam Martin, able to run step for step with Javaris James. Yeah, he stayed right with him, didn't he, on that route? This is Cooper. A crease from Cooper. Just inside the 25 for a first down. We always talk about gap responsibilities. And a defensive line, when you get balled up like they did here, there's no chance. At the start, you'll see right here in the middle of the field, there's a balling effect of Virginia Tech's defensive line. Look at this right here. 
There's no way you can do that. You've got to stay in your lane. Five receivers now in the backfield for Marv. Looks left and throws that way. And the catch made by LaRon Bird, the hero, a week ago. He made that catch at the end of regulation against Virginia, capping one of the great drives in the country this season, 95-yard drive. This is one of the areas on the field where if you're playing against Bud Foster, Virginia Tech, you better start expecting pressure. You start kind of getting in this fringe area, moving closer to the 20-yard line, you're going to get a lot of heat thrown at you. This is where Virginia Tech feels their backs are on the wall. Now there's Jason World right here. He's a heck of a player, too. Oh. Another design run, and Robert Marr loses the ball. A scrum at the five, and Miami gets it. The first really lucky break of this game as Bird, the big play receiver, bails out his quarterback. It's a lucky break for Miami, but give LaRon Bird credit for showing great hustle. The wide receiver running downfield to try to get a block, and when you do that, you're always around the football so that if your quarterback does fumble, you can jump on and retain possession. Cam yeah, Martin forced that fumble, and now it's first and goal at the six. James in the eye formation. Navarro's James hammers ahead. Stopped at about the three. One of the, beauties, the stop, one of the beauties of having a couple of really good running backs is that you have pressure the length of the field. A lot of times you get these guys in between the 20s, the backs are good, and they run out of gas inside the red zone. And, and not here. James is healthy enough that they can get in there. You see the numbers. I mean, it's you know tied for fourth in the country in red zone offense. Yeah, but they only have 22 touchdowns. They've yeah. kicked 10 field goals down here. So they usually get points on the board, but they're thinking seven here. It helps to have your most physical runner back. Now that Jabari's James is back, this red zone offensive playbook opens up. They fake it to James. Marv pressured. Escapes the sack. Lobs it over the end zone. Wow. Cody Grimm had the quick pressure, and Marv was just able to avoid a really damaging sack. How many times have we seen in tape study Grimm come off the slot in the backfield, making plays, forcing breakdowns by the quarterback? He usually gets them down, though, Jesse. I'm really impressed with Robert Marv on this play. He's only a freshman, and he's trying to buy time, and trying to buy time, wanting to throw a touchdown pass. But if it's not there, he does the smart thing, just throws it away, and now Miami lives to play another down. Third down. Marcuson in motion. It's a power run and James busts in. Welcome back, Javaris James. He does his job, hammers it in from two yards. Miami marches 76 yards in 12 plays. And three runs by Robert Marr for a total of 37. He survives the fumble with Bird making the clutch recovery. And James takes it in. So on a night that Edgerin James is honored for the Ring of Fame, one of his kinsmen, Javaris, finds the end zone. Steak, man. Enjoy your steaks, gentlemen. Is this it? You in order? Oh, valet's getting mine. I'm not a steak guy anymore, you know? <laughs> there it is. Triple steak burrito. See, I'm more of a triple steak kind of guy. Oh. <laughs> Taco Bell's new triple steak burrito. Steak, steak, and more grilled marinated steak. There's steak night, then there's triple steak night. Triple steak guys, that's what we are. In here. The way the stock market's been acting lately, you may wonder if you've been doing the right thing. Is the advice you've been getting helping or hurting? Are the fees you're paying really worth it? TD Ameritrade's fees are fair and straightforward. Their research is independent and unbiased. Their investment consultants are knowledgeable and there when you need them. So why not talk to one? 
Call, click, or visit a TD Ameritrade branch today. Years of War 2 presents UFC 91, Couture vs. Listener. Live, Saturday, November 15th, from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. On DirecTV, pay-per-view. This is the third year that Miami has inducted folks into the Ring of Honor. They just cover up here at Dolphin Stadium, all the Dolphins who've been honored. This is class number two, Marie Kozar. One national championship in 83 honored. And this is this year's class. Gina Toretta, Heisman Trophy winner in 92. The great Jim Otto, 12 time All Pro center. And they'll join Vinny, Burgess Owens, Otis Anderson. You need a bigger stadium to house all the names of the great ones they've had come through this place. It's a pretty good looking class going in this year. Hey, a nice tradition, too. And all those guys honored at a luncheon today, and all of them extremely flattered to be included. Guys who are part of the tradition at Miami. Here's another short kickoff. This is Roberts taking it. Arrell Roberts gets out of the grass from the tackle. They finally sling him down by the jersey at the 25. Demarcus Van Dyke on the stop and Aaron Andrews on the field with one of the new Ring of Honor inductees. All right, Chris, thanks so much. He's mad at us, by the way, because we've kept him waiting from taking part of some of extracurricular activities up there. What does this honor mean to you, one of the five members being inducted tonight? Well, it's, it's tremendous. I mean, it's, it's, it makes us all speechless. And when I was sitting up there on the dais for lunch today, it's like Jim Otto's in the Hall of Fame. Jim Kelly's in the Hall of Fame. Cortez Kennedy's probably on his way to the Hall of Fame, and so is Edgar James. And then there's me up there. So uh, it's, just, it's just an awesome honor. All right, Tyrod Taylor will take off and, and scramble, and he'll pick up about 10 yards and a first down. Aaron? Gino, everybody's asking, you know, how close is Miami to getting that you swagger back? You're around here. You live here in Coral Gables. I mean, what do you think? Well, it comes with experience. They got a very young team. They got two young quarterbacks. They got young receivers, a young defense that flies around and plays impressive. So that's why they've come along defensively faster is because defenses, they get better faster. Now it's just going to take time for the two quarterbacks to learn their role and, and to play better, and, and then we'll be all right. Let the play happen. We'll come back down. Chris Fowler. Speaking of quarterback wrinkles, Aaron, Greg Boone, this is the tight end. They showed this last week. He's a high school quarterback. Hadn't played the position until last week. He was a, a tough runner against Maryland, but this wrinkle to fool no one in green. We've got to bust Geno's chops a little bit here. You know, they were showing us around the facilities yesterday, sprucing it up, and head coach Randy Shannon said all these rooms that we're fixing up are from former players that are giving money. Our very own Craig James wants to know, when is your room coming? <laughs> On a percentage basis, I probably give more than those guys. Those guys have just made a lot more to me in the NFL, so uh, when I make as much as them, then, then I'll have a room after me. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations. Enjoy the night. And by the way, I was told to ask about some golf incident Craig in Phoenix where you hit a ball through a woman's house we'll I, get that soon oh gosh meathead what are you doing telling stories on me <laughs> and congratulate Gino he didn't have to apologize for oh. being alongside Otto and Cortez Kennedy and those guys when you win the Heisman Trophy you belong at any school's ring of honor oh, what a great player he was and how much fun was it for us to cover him playing here uh, a great guy and there's just so many here at Miami, and they really lean heavily. Randy Shannon, being a former player, they lean heavily on their former greats around here to set the example for all these young kids. You know what it means to have somebody walk through the locker room and it's one of those great players. You're like, man, pride. Well, I'll tell you what, the sidelines all the time. You see yeah, their yeah. presence. Well, they're everywhere. Even when I played with the New York Giants and San Francisco 49ers, that locker room, you talk about pride amongst the former Miami Hurricane players. They come back to these games. You see them on the sidelines. They watch. They're proud. They talk to the players. They help. They work out with them in the offseason and yeah. motivate them. I mean, this is a very, very special group here at the U, and that's the reason why I think it's special to play here. 
There's 46 Hurricanes on NFL rosters right now. That's far and away the most of any school. Florida State next with 37. Not all the coaches here love to know the ex Kings would hang out in the sidelines and, and become amateur coaches, though. I, I have to be honest. It's, it's, it's not it's a unanimous. There's a there. fine yeah. line. There's a fine line there. This is Glennon back in at quarterback now on second and 10. And they flip it short. Evans couldn't hold it. He wasn't going anywhere anyway. He was probably getting hit for a loss because there was a lot of traffic. Bruce Johnson, the corner, came up and joined the true freshman, Sean Spence. We're seeing this Miami defense really grow up this season. These last four weeks, the way they've come around, how fast they play the game. Even though they're young, they're playing fast. And give Bill Young, their defensive coordinator, a lot of credit because he simplifies the defense. He doesn't make it too complicated. This is a very, very young group. He wants them just to go out, play fast, swarm around the football, give themselves a chance to win. You get a chance for a stop here now on third and ten. In the pocket, fires a wobbly pass, and the catch is made going up in traffic. Andre Smith out battled two hurricanes. He doesn't have enough for the first down at the 45. This is how you play wide receiver. You've got two guys on you. You bail your quarterback out of a ball. It's a wobbler tail dug down the field. You like that, don't you? Well, it's man-to-man -man coverage, and a quarterback's best friend is a receiver or tight end that will go up and fight for the football in double coverage. That's exactly what Sean Glennon got right there. It's even better if you get beyond the first down marker <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you stop your route. But, hey. <laughs> one, one out of two ain't bad. Nice catch. Just sets up a punt from Bowden here. short kick. Benjamin, he won't get many chances to return him if Bowden's going to kick him like that. The first punt, which is 33 yards. This one rolls out of the 15 and covered 40. Our ESPNU, All State Sandings, the BCS, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma, of course, on a collision course in Norman a week from Saturday. Alabama has Mississippi State this weekend. And these fellas right here, Texas, they've got the hay in the barn looking good. Of course, you've got Florida. They got a chance. Your old Gators just do their business. They got to take care of it Saturday. They got to win out, but they got a huge matchup against the third best total defense in South Carolina at home this Saturday. That's going to be a great football game. I think there are three teams that control their destiny Alabama and Florida and Texas Tech. The other teams will make a loss. It looks like a kind of a de facto national semifinal game in the SEC championship if the Tide and the Gators can get there. This is James now. And you thought it might be just 85%. That's it's a pretty good run in the first quarter on an ankle that's 85%. He has the game's only touchdown. And the Canes lead his seven zip after one. Prime time, Mississippi State, Alabama, Saturday, 7:45 Eastern. wasn't in the picture. 
He was in the men's room going again. Another moment, but Bob really needed to go. And when the guy snapped this one, Charlie was stuck in the men's room having trouble going. These male urinary symptoms could be due to BPH, also called an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax reduces their urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not a more serious condition like prostate cancer. Avoid driving or hazardous tasks for 12 hours after your first dose or increase in dose as a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Common side effects are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Get the picture? Take a moment to ask your doctor if Flomax is right for you and call 877-4-FLOMAX for a free one-week trial. For many men, Flomax can make a difference in one week. This is our guy Desmond Howard. Gina Twitter, not the only Heisman winner. Hey, Desmond, come on. <laughs> Hang on, us here. Stay wait, away. Wait, we're not trying to. It's only we the second know we quarter. We didn't know we do that. We, we burned him right there. He lives down here, of course. Boy, down guy. near the campus. And uh, he said he might be coming. <laughs> Maybe he should have stayed at home. He may have stayed in a little South Beach section too much last night. Oh, no, no. Family man. Oh, yeah. he, he's not hanging with Jesse's crowd down there on the beach. <laughs> this is Marv. He's pressured. Right, there's an empty backfield, and the Hokies just came storming in. Orion Martin and Jason Worlds met at the quarterback. You know, hey, here's a part in the football game where that offensive line up there, they've got to do a little bit better job because there's no rhythm right now in this passing game. No, and there's no, there's no question about it. It's not a surprise. Virginia Tech at the defensive end position. They're going to be pinning their ears back, getting upfield. Jason Worlds, Orion Martin. These guys are going to be applying pressure right upfield. Miami has to be very stout, especially at the tackle spots. Empty backfield again. And it's third and ten after the loss. Oki show pressure again. Mark gets it away quickly. And the catch made and trying to fight forward for a first down. And breaking free is Farkerson across midfield. So they give up protection to get numbers on the edge. 37 yards. Look inside at how fast Virginia Tech's coming to the middle for the quarterback pocket. An outstanding call by Patrick Nix getting it away from the pressure. Well, that's Bud Foster again bringing one more player that Miami can protect. But Robert Marv doing a nice job just getting the football out of his hands, putting it in the hands of his playmakers. Kane Farkasson doing the rest. Hokies have been susceptible to big pass plays. They give up a very high percentage of opposing Pass plays over 20 yards has been the problem for Bud Foster's defense. But that happens a lot. When Bud Foster, if he's willing to give pressure and get after the quarterback as much as he does, then you have to be willing to accept that they're going to burn you sometime. But he got away with it last week against Maryland. He came, he got to them. This is Craig Cooper. Loses the football. Hokies have it. Cooper. Fumbled the football to kill a promising drive, and Cam Chancellor is a very Johnny on the spot kind of DB comes up with it. This is the most difficult position for a running back to be. Watch when he gets in the hole from behind. The defender will carry and try to tug from the football, and you're not aware of it as a running back. And this is the issue Gray Cooper has had here recently. He had two fumbles last week against Virginia. Here again, just being a little careless with it. That's a good job of Virginia Tech just getting around the football and ripping it out. And Darian Ports, the junior rover, forced the fumble. Okies with a great tradition of forcing turnovers. It's been kind of a problem this year. 20 takeaways, okay. Not what they're used to, though. So Glennon pitches it off, and Evans gets the edge. And then gets hammered after about five yards by Daryl Sharpton. Guy's been nursing a knee, the junior linebacker. <laughs> well, I happen to be watching Sharpton on that play. He stuck out. Look at him going from right. Watch how fast. Right to left. Number 50. Mm, is that fast? It helps your run defense when you got a lot of guys that can run sideline to sideline like that. One of the big reasons why Miami's been so stout this year against the run, they got linebackers that can go coast to coast. Lennon fires near side. This is Cole, his fourth catch. And Danny Cole, a first down inside the Miami 45. 
What's impressive to watch is Virginia Tech's receivers get downfield and block as well. And that last play, Darrell Roberts and Jared Boykin, both true freshmen, paving the way for Danny Cole on the quick screen. He's been the weapon of choice when the Hokies have thrown the football tonight. Now Tyrod Taylor comes in at quarterback. And it's okay. difficult for these guys to keep any rhythm, isn't it? Absolutely. But Taylor had a good practice a couple of days ago. That's what bought him time tonight. Taylor. And Evans is hit immediately. You know, when you watch these young linebackers, Michael Barrow played here, Miami, played in NFL, great player. He's their linebacker coach. Barrow's a guy that has got great knowledge of the game. See Mike in there? There he is. And, and man, those linebackers are taught to get down the hill to read formations. I played with Michael Barrow in New York for three years. You want to talk about an intense competitor, and he brings that to this linebacker group here in Miami. He was one of the intensities that came to <laughs> This is Taylor now. A fake oh. pressure hit. One of the many true freshmen on this team, Marcus Forston, got in his first sack of his career. You'll see Forston the way he does this. And watch right in here. Watch how he hits, pulls the jersey, rips by Marshman. Great technique. There's so much young ability. There's so much youth on this defensive line. And Coach Young told us, look, there's, again, not a big difference between our starters and our backups on the D-line. So they can afford to rotate these guys and let them go. 308 pounds. He comes out for a rest on third and 20. Now I get some fresh pass rushers in there. A three-down lineman look. Taylor stays in the pocket and flips it short to Evans, but he's not going to get free. Glenn Cook tracks him down, drops him 10 yards short of the first down. So the true freshman sack stops this hokey drive. Marcus Forsman, he had another one of those great young true freshman players from Northwestern High School here in the Miami area. They got a great class. ESPN.com said it was the best recruiting class in the country. Marcus Forsman, one of the big reasons why. And Ja'Cory Harris, the quarterback we haven't seen yet. Now Darius Johnson, the receiver, part of the seven guys who came over from that powerhouse football program in Liberty City. So Bowden will try to pin the Canes deep. Nice job. And it'll roll dead at the eight yard line. Dustin Pickle down there on the coverage. Miami takes over up 7 0. To look at it, you'd never suspect that this was part of a working landfill. That's because Waste Management works closely with communities and the Wildlife Habitat Council to make sure we can all live peacefully together. Today, our landfills provide more than 17,000 acres of protected land for wildlife habitat. From everyday collection to environmental protection, think green, think waste management. At a time when others don't, Nissan delivers. 0% financing on many of Nissan's most popular models. Nissan delivers. Attractive lease options on our full line of vehicles. Nissan delivers. A Nissan Altima or Rogue for only $199 a month. Or a brand new Versa for under $10,000. When you need it most, Nissan delivers. Ah oh, yes, the Geico Gecko in migration. Driven by primal instinct to help people save hundreds of dollars on their car insurance. Hey, do you see that guy over there? He's giving me the eebie-jeebies. Gotta be kidding me. Ooh. <laughs> what a clever creature. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. This month on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. I want to protect the people I put in harm's way. Yeah, I can fly. I love you. Are you breaking up with me? Why don't you go on a vacation? You just by yourself? Yeah. What are you doing here? This is a disaster. She's I'm dating somebody. Ah! Skywalker is in trouble. We're under attack. Battle position. Direct TV pay-per-view. Just press a button and you're watching your movie.
The NBA season is here. You can get all the action and excitement with NBA League Pass. This is your complete season pass for only $189 or just four payments of $47.25 each. See the top stars and your favorite teams wherever you live on channel 751 through 768. Order now and get the best games, countless moments, and lasting memories. Get NBA League Pass from DirecTV now for just $189 or four payments of $47.25 each. To order, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit directtv.com. Big Ten football this Saturday afternoon, noon Eastern time, following college game day. Ohio State still very much alive in the Rose Bowl hunt. Need another loss by Penn State. Illinois, Champaign hosting the Buckeyes at noon Eastern time. So Ja'Cory Harris, boy, they, they throw the true freshman in there who's been outplaying Marv in recent weeks. His first action backed up in very full field position. A miscommunication. Harris trying to escape, and he'll be dropped for a loss. Cody Grimm there on the stop, and you know, Harris was the hero. It was a 95-yard drive. They converted a, a third and 13 to their two-yard line, and here he is finding Laron Bird, who stumbles over a defender. There's an interference flag. They decline making the catch, and then in overtime, now Darius Johnson, his high school teammate, right at the pylon, fumble, forced. Against Cedric Perriman of Virginia and the Canes, a huge win, but it's a miscommunication there for Harris in the very first play. On the very, very first play, not coming out the gate the way Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator of Miami, would like. He's got to settle himself down, get down into rhythm. You give it to James. Not much room. Javaris fights to the six yard line. Tough position to make a switch though, backed up in your own goal line. Well, and you've got an offensive line. You've got two different players that are in different positions right now. You got people backing up at left tackle where Reggie Youngblood was starting because of an injury with Jason Fox. Now you've got Youngblood going over to right tackle to play for Rutledge. So you've got a you've got a variation up front in the red zone area here. Well, the quarterback rotation is nothing new for Miami. Traditionally, Robert Marr will start the first three series. Jacory Harris comes in for the next two. And that's when maybe they start switching around. Yeah, I know they maintain that pattern, but you know, this is, it's just tough field position for Harris. You, you got to be careful down here. And on third down, he'll fire short. It's complete. Collier hit by Grimm, and here comes a punt. So a three and out in the first series for Harris. But doesn't that hold true to what Patrick Nix, the coordinator, told us yesterday? They can put in either guy in there. It doesn't matter where they are in the field and what the situation is, and they don't know who's going to be hot, hot regardless of the game. I wonder how tough it is, though, for Patrick Nix as an offensive coordinator to manage games, not only calling plays, but managing two quarterbacks as well. It'll be interesting to see how this game plays out. Look, he's peeled back to set up a return of this Matt Bosher punt, and a fair catch made by Macho Harris. At the 47, so good field position after the 43-yard punt. We'll talk to Jim Kelly, another member of Miami's Ring of Honor, when we come back. For the price of a night in, how about a night out? Introducing Applebee's two for 20 menu, full-on dinner for two people for 20 bucks. Choose one great appetizer to share and two amazing entrees, like our juicy seven-ounce sirloin, our signature double crunch shrimp, and so much more. So take your wife or your sister. Sure, take him. It's Applebee's two for 20, and it's the best meal and the best deal in the neighborhood. At a time when others don't, Nissan delivers. 0% financing on many of Nissan's most popular models. Nissan delivers. Attractive lease options on our full line of vehicles. Nissan delivers. A Nissan Altima or Rogue for only $199 a month. Or a brand new Versa for under $10,000. When you need it most, Nissan delivers. My new computer started out fast, really fast, but now it's only kind of fast. Hold on, let me check my email. It's not loading. Let me try this again. <sighs> if your PC doesn't run like it's supposed to, if your internet connection is unreliable, even on a so-called fast connection, even if your brand new computer isn't as fast as it ought to be, you might not have any real problem at all. 
FinallyFast.com free performance test will immediately diagnose any hidden problems and show you how to get more speed on any computer. Plus, FinallyFast.com provides you the software you need to get your computer up to peak performance by getting rid of all the nasty junk files, spyware, adware, and registry errors that make even the best computers freeze and crash. Find out why Ascentive has been featured in Newsweek, Forbes, and the Wall Street Journal. You could save hundreds, even thousands of dollars by taking the Finally Fast performance test first. I'm booted up. It's that URL I should look at. Finallyfast.com. Hey, my computer's fast. Finally. Finallyfast.com. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Nissan. Passionate about performance and proud sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. It's downtown Miami, about a 45 minute drive, depending on traffic, away from Dolphin Stadium up here. Canes now call home. Best starting field position for Virginia Tech at their own 47 yard line. And Macho Harris, the corner and sometimes receiver, motions out of the backfield. He's in the slot to the left of Tyrod Taylor. They fake it that direction, and Taylor takes off. Tyrod Taylor. Hammered after about a 10 yard gain. We talked about the luminaries from Miami's great pass that are here tonight. Jim Kelly, member of that Ring of Honor, joins us now from the field. Jim, you were a young guy thrown in there 79 against a very good Penn State team. You know what it's like for Marvin to Corey Harris to learn on the job and, and battle their nerves while they're trying to figure out the defenses. Well, it's a little different because they both alternate back and forth. And I know to get the rhythm, you got to stick with just one guy. But of course, I'm not in the locker room. I'm not in practice to see uh, what Coach Shannon sees in both those quarterbacks. But to get the continuity and get the team working together, and more than anything, is for me, it's the leadership. Uh, for the teammates to see in either one of them. But hey, he knows what's going well. There's six wins, three losses, but hopefully we'll get that seventh win tonight. Hey, hey Jim, we're watching videos of you throwing the football back in the day. You were one of the original run and shoot guys down in the Houston Gamblers, right? Oh, that was fun. I mean, imagine this <laughs> throwing the ball 40, 50 times a game, and I had little guys running around. I think we threw over for 10,000 yards in two, two, uh, two years so that was where I really learned to pass the game to be honest with you and now every offense in college it seems used some variation of the old Houston Gamblers offense they don't get a first down and second and very short and now Glennon he's in the game to pitch it to Evans and Darren Evans gets a first down Hey, Jim. No fumble, ball is down. Jim, Miami is such a proud tradition at quarterback. It's referred to as quarterback you. Obviously, you had a big part to play in that. What are your early impressions of Robert Marvin, Ja'Cory Harris? Well, one thing that I even you know noticed today, one of the things they have to do is have confidence in their offensive line. Um, when I look at a young quarterback, I look at the progressions. Do they go to the first or second to the drop-off? Tonight, I've seen a little bit of Robert Marv. He's dropping back. If his first receiver's uh, covered, he's all automatically looking to run the football. These guys got to get used and get comfortable and have confidence in their offensive line so they can go through the progressions, give these receivers time to get open. And right now, I don't see that. So hopefully, they'll develop. They're young. they got a long way to go yet. All right, Jim, they're going to review the previous play to see if it was, in fact, a fumble. Did the ball come out before Evans was down? It looks like it's loose a little bit there. Yeah, I tell you what, that's going to be. And the ball hit a blocker, one of his own men. It was his hip on the ground. Didn't you think the ball was no fumble ruling on the field but it looks like the ball had shifted from total possession yeah, it looks, it looks to be bit. out and Miami did recover it yeah. if it's a rule to fumble it'll be Miami football hey Jim who was the best receiver you ever played with well Andre Reed that's no brain I mean I had some good ones I had James Lofton is a pro football Hall of Famer Andre Reed probably will go in the Hall of Fame hopefully this year if not next year Don Beebe I had some good ones and maybe that's why I'm in the pro football Hall of Fame because I was surrounded by a lot of great yeah. great players I know you live in Buffalo still and you're down here has it been nice to, to kind of reunite with some of the Miami players it looks like a pretty good turnout down there oh there's there's no doubt you know coming down seeing all my friends and of course going up in the Wall of Fame here at uh, Dolphin Stadium I never played for the Hurricanes here, as everybody knows, the Orange Bowl was down, but I remember some great times right here in this stadium when I played for the Buffalo Bills. We <laughs> pretty much dominated. No, I, I, I'm not going to say that, Dan. Marino's a good friend of mine. I'm just messing with you, but we had some uh, some great, great games down here. We used we nicknamed this stadium when I was playing back in the 90s, Rich Stadium South. Yeah, I remember. So do, <laughs> so do the Dolphin fans. Let's check out, Jim, a couple other replays to see if we can tell whether or not the call of no fumble on the field 
will stand up. Evans losing the ball right there before his rear end hits the ground. It looks like I thought in the initial Jackson contact overturned. the ball went from being tucked underneath his elbow. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Well, not enough to overturn it. Okay. Hey, Jim, thanks. And once again, congratulations for the honor tonight. Enjoy your time down here in Miami. Thank you, guys. It's always a pleasure listening to you guys do a game. It's great. Thank you very Thank much. You. See you, Jim. You got it. I went to Jim Kelly's high school football camp when I was in the ninth was, grade. Was he actually show up? Oh, he was there. You should Warren, talk to Warren, him about Warren that. Moon was there. <laughs> Taylor throwing deep, looking for Cole. No flag. And incomplete. All right, there was a time when Bill Young finally dialed it up and brought a lot of pressure on Taylor, and he had his solo coverage there. Single on the right, a little help over the top with the safety, but they're going to have to get a little bit more consistent. Now, it's funny. There's been a lot of inexperience on the field right now for Virginia Tech at the wide receiver position. This receiving group has yet to catch a touchdown pass, but they come out into this game. It's pretty apparent right now. Danny Cole is the guy they're trying to go to. If you didn't remember, they lost their top four receivers from a year ago. Two of those guys starting in the NFL, so a whole new core. Cole, the redshirt freshman, is the veteran, and he's been the most active guy tonight with those four catches. This is Taylor. Pitches to Evans. Gets a block. Darren Evans, a first down inside the 30. So the option works, and we'll check in with Reese Davis for the first time of the 30 at 30 update. All right, Chris, Sports Center right now. Cliff Lee is your American League Cy Young winner. Not much suspense there. He went 22 and 3 with a 2.54 ERA on his way to winning the Cy Young. And we have an NFL game going on Jets and Patriots. Jets with a 7 3 lead just about to go to the end of the first quarter. Sports Center coming up after the game. Stay current with ESPN News. Reese, thank you. There's Evans again. Dolphins fans, interested in what happens with the. Jets and Patriots, Miami chasing them a game behind in the division. Evans has had to work for his yards. I mean, 32 carries a week ago for a guy not used to that kind of work workload. You know he spent some time in the ice bath trying to recover. Well, in that game against Maryland, he had six carries of over 15 yards. He was able to gash them, and he got stronger as the game went on. One thing so impressive about Darren Evans, he broke 12 tackles in that game. He's had a tougher time here against Miami. He's only had one carry that was on that option longer than five yards tonight. Lennon is the quarterback on second and ten. Looks right and flips it there. This is Evans. He lowers the head and hammers to the 15. It's a first down. Brandon Harris on the stop. Well, I was just getting ready to compliment the linebacker unit again for Miami of how aggressive they are in stopping Darren Evans. This time they get bunched up in the middle of the field. They get lost in their coverage. And Evans to the outside. You're talking about a dynamite weapon. If a guy can catch it as well as he runs it. He caught a couple passes a week ago. So that gave him 273 all-purpose yards against the Terps. This is an area of the football field that Bill Young's defense at Miami has really struggled in this year. They get to Evans for no gain. Now you're right, Jesse. They have been very porous in the red zone, and Bill Young was telling us yesterday they tried everything. They tried every kind of scheme, every kind of adjustment. Nothing's worked. They haven't been able to put their finger on it. They've tried to mix up coverages. They've tried to mix up fronts. They brought pressure. They played back. Nothing seemed to have worked, and that's something that's really stumping Bill Young and this Miami defense right now. But I think some of that comes back down to this. When you have 22 guys that are interchangeable, that means that sometimes you don't have the three or four that you can count on up front to 20, stop it. 22 guys and 22 young guys as well. So Taylor back in on second and ten. Pressure off the edge. Taylor has room on their right. Gets a block. Tyrod Taylor. Touchdown. His receiver threw a block for him. Jared Boykin. 14-yard touchdown run. That's why Tyrod Taylor's in the football game. Bill Young Listening almost to what we're saying up here, he dials up and brings a lot of folks, a lot of pressure. And Taylor, with his ability to get outside the pocket, you just can't deal with it. A couple of flags in the end zone after the touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number five of the scoring team. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the succeeding kickoff. And flag Taylor for unsportsmanlike after he scored the touchdown. This was a point of emphasis. 
I said they were going to crack down on this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess they don't, they don't like the symbols. They don't like when you flash the symbols. I, they, don't know what, they don't know what that means, I, I, I but they don't like it. I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> you think he knows what he was, Colin? Huh? Dustin Keyes boots it through. So Taylor takes it the last 14 yards. They march 53 in eight plays. Taylor had two runs on this drive. At a time when others don't, Nissan delivers. 0% financing on many of Nissan's most popular models. Nissan delivers. Attractive lease options on our full line of vehicles. Nissan delivers. A Nissan Altima or Rogue for only $199 a month. Or a brand new Versa for under $10,000. When you need it most, Nissan delivers. He was an outsider. See why they boys want to have a go? Who answered to no one? I learned a long time ago not to fight other people's wars. But this Thanksgiving, they will have to answer to him. I'm only going to say this once. I run the shot. The rest of you jokers follow me. Welcome to Australia. Australia. This film is not yet rated. All right. Wait, my volcano taco. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> Introducing Taco Bell's new 89 cent volcano taco. With spicy lava sauce, it could be the spiciest taco ever. Oh. Oh, man. Why pay more for heat when you can think outside the bar? In this house, we're all about tradition. We don't even change a light bulb without having a family conference about it. Nope. I wouldn't change one thing about this house. What's going on? Can we keep it? Oh, I think so. The NFL. That's how I see it. The Samsung Series 7 Plasma with a touch of color finish. When beautiful design is the name of the game, imagination lives. See their whole story at Samsung.com. It's big sports weekend down here in Miami. Jimmy Johnson closing in on an historic feat. Only one other guy in NASCAR has done it. Three straight NASCAR Sprint Cup titles. The season concludes with a fourth 400 at Homestead. Sunday on ABC coverage begins at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Jimmy Johnson and his team in the number 48 car. Tremendous feat. You have to understand how great that is to win one championship, well, much less three. What, finished 36th or better, and he wins the championship, and his worst finish of the season is 39th? Well, Jimmy Johnson's never won at Homestead, but the good news is his average finish there is 13th. And that's not the guy who's going to be behind the wheel at Homestead, by the way. The, he's, he's now the other Jimmy Johnson, I guess, <laughs> except not down here in Miami. <laughs> Jimmy's got, what, two Super Bowls and a national title, so he's got a pretty good resume, too. Very short kick taken by Brandon Harris. And Brandon Harris, the true freshman, into Hokie territory. But a flag comes down. The return of 36 yards, but it's going to come back at least part of it. Uh, you know, during the return, illegal block in the back, number 18 of the receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. That penalty is such a problem for this team. They had seven false start penalties alone against Virginia. Diedrich Epps, the tight end, is guilty of the illegal block. And will move the ball back to the Miami 33. And, and the fact that you've talked about these quarterbacks and Ja'Cory Harris coming in in field position. It's been a long field for Miami tonight. Their average starting field position is the 16. So they finally get a little bit of a break past midfield and they come up with a mistake. And it is Ja'Cory Harris back in at quarterback. They get a second series. Much better field position to work with this time. Craig Cooper is the back. Harris keeps it. Gets the corner and skips out of bounds. He's 185 pounds. Randy Shannon says he looks frail, but he really isn't. He's, he's also pretty tough mentally. I like this. I like the whole presence about 
Harris and Robert Marv. You know, I watched Harris in a scrimmage in spring. He completed his first eight passes in the first scrimmage he ever walked on the field with. And I think Jacor Harris showed us a lot on that last-minute drive last week against Virginia to put the game into overtime. They had to overcome three false start penalties on that 95-yard drive just to get it into OT. Well, he's bring pressure. Harris gets it away. Lobbing downfield and off the fingertips of Parkerson. He had Cam Chancellor beat. Oh. That's now two big drops for these young Miami receivers. Man-to-man -man coverage. Ja'Cory Harris has exactly what he wants, and he could not have thrown that football any better. As a receiver, you don't want to run with your arms extended like that. Sprint. Just run under the ball and put your arms out at the last second. And Harris reminds me a lot of his throws. Uh, of any quarterback that you said, I, I was going to say Joe Montana, because everybody always says how he anticipated when he threw the football so well. It's a soft, catchable football. That was a soft, catchable ball. On third down, Harris keeps it and tries to pick his way. He gets popped. He doesn't get the first down. Macho living up to his name, delivering the blow on the true freshman. And Miami will have to punt. <laughs> There's a saying. Come out of your shoes when he hits somebody. Watch Macho when he leaves. Boom! It's going to be very, very difficult as a quarterback to try to run outside of this fast Virginia Tech defense. If you're given an opportunity and seem to get north, you better take it, particularly on third down. Macho makes the big hit and now drops back to receive the punt. And Bosher. Makes the fair catch at the 22-yard line. Well, let's check out the Applebee's weekend menu. Not the greatest slate of games, but some intrigue in the ACC. BC, Florida State, that's a primetime game. Carolina, Maryland, again, the Tar Heels must lose for Miami to have a shot at winning the division. Not that game, but just one of the remaining games. How about Oregon State, the team that we called, what was that, seven weeks ago when they upset USC? They're hanging in there. They control Good. their own fate. They got a good little run. They're going to play Cal, Arizona, and Oregon. Three good offenses. They are in control of their destiny. They went out. They go to the Rose Bowl. Evans. No lose about a yard at Arizona, and then the, the Civil War against Oregon in Corvallis, the three remaining games for the Beavers. I think they're one of the intriguing teams to watch down the stretch. I really do. Yeah, I they, they can win all three. They can lose any of them. And, and Jock Wes Rogers, the little freshman, true freshman running back that we saw nail USC for a couple of hundred that night. He's, he's leading it and he's doing great out I there. was impressed. And he's been able to stay healthy for a little guy like he is, week in, week out. He's pounding the rod. He shows up every Saturday and he's productive as a true freshman. Lennon looks to his left and fires short. This is Evans muscled out of bounds about a yard short of the first down by Bruce Johnson. I like this here. You know, Brian Steinspring, the coordinator, he's got to get out of that running between the tackles. He's got to open up, get outside. This is a very stuffing, stifling defense inside. Their front seven, very impressive. It's been conservative, a game plan also right now for Virginia Tech. Passing, they haven't taken too many shots downfield. Sean Leonard right now, five for six. Tyrod Taylor, three for five. Quarterback's doing a nice job just managing the offense. Need yard on third down. Evans. No get it. So inside of two and a half minutes before halftime, Monkeys will get a momentary stoppage to move the change. We check with Reese Davis. All right, Chris, coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, we'll have the latest on the Clemson coaching search. Clemson's arch rival, South Carolina, the head ball coach pays a visit to Dr. Lou. And we'll also give Charlie Weiss a grade for his performance with Notre Dame so far. Mark and Lou will join me. We'll see you in just a little bit on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Chris, thanks. That's two minutes away now. Lennon thought about pitching. He just keeps it and ducks under. Oh, well, that Ojomo was right there, so they don't appear to be in a real hurry here. No, it, it, we go back to the, the halftime report coming up. Do you think that May Day will give Lou Holtz, a, I mean, uh, Charlie Weiss, a big grade? What would you? What kind of grade would you give him? I, I think he's got a D right now. A but D. I, absolutely, man. His football team. He personally said in the spring he expected to win nine football games or more, or he would be disappointed. And he's sitting at five and four with Navy, USC, and. 
Syracuse as they heave it downfield and making a juggling catch is Boykin. What a circus catch over Bruce Johnson. What an outstanding catch by the true freshman Jared Boykin. You're going to see another great example of those strong hands. He goes up, wow. he's able to tip it and uh, pin the football on his shoulder. I I'm love a, it. I love David Tyree from yeah. the Super Bowl, New York Giants, and the Patriots just pinning the ball, showing great poise. I liked how he was in there swatting down the defender's hand, keeping him off of him. Body position. Nice job with the ball in the air. Lennon flips it short. Evans can't make the routine catch here. Wow, that's one of the catches of the year by Boykin. You can see the hand strength, the, the, the huge paws you talked about to be able to pin it on your shoulder pad like that. But he wouldn't have had a chance to catch this if he didn't use his left hand to keep the defender off of him. I like that. That Man. shows a presence about where the body is and then bringing those big paws in. You can see why the coaching staff is so excited about Jared Boykin, the type of player they project him to be here in the near future. That's a good sign, though. He's able to go out now and make plays for this offense. Physical guy, 6'2", comes out of Matthews, North Carolina. Pump fake, Lennon, hit, drops! Marcus Robinson, the true freshman got him. So two sacks by true freshman tonight. They just play fast. Miami's front seven is a lot quicker tonight. Off the corner, they're just faster. Marcus Robinson, he's a guy that's 6'1", 242, like a linebacker. They have to burn a timeout, 50 seconds before halftime. I want to change the future. My research will make a difference. My students will impact the world. We're generating the next generation of robotics. Safer, cleaner drinking water for everyone. Genetech is the place to do undergraduate research. It's just an amazing sense of community. We've got mountains, rivers, and beautiful valleys. This campus is so beautiful. I love Virginia Tech. I'm proud to be a Hokie. We are Virginia Tech. And we invent the future. The University of Miami is on the move. We're revealing the mysteries of the world, from the eye of the hurricane to the human genome. We're creating oceans of knowledge and helping to shape citizens of the world. We're making a difference right now in the classroom, the laboratory, and on our... So the sack makes it third and 19, and it's Taylor. Running around. And he'll dance out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. So with 41 seconds to go, once again, a sack by a true freshman disrupts a Virginia Tech drive as we see the quarterback. Vinny Testaverde joining Kelly and Bernie Kosar there on the right. Didn't Vinny play like 53 years in the NFL or something like he's still 22 playing? 22 seasons. <laughs> no, he's 22 not still <laughs> seasons. Gino back there. You got a couple of highs from Trevor Winters, a couple of guys with national championships. So this is a long field goal attempt of 51 yards for Dustin Keyes. It would be a career long. Low boot. Line drive. Missed it. And what killed that drive for Virginia Tech was Sean Glennon taking the sack when his team had the football inside the 30-yard line, under a minute left. As a quarterback, the clock in your head has to go off. They try a double move. He's just holding on to the football, squeezing it. He takes a sack, pushes the football back, and now Virginia Tech not with the ability to score points going into halftime in a tie ball game. And, and the fact that Darren Evans, remember he dropped the ball in the flat? That's a pickup of five or eight, or eight yards right there. Yeah. So. Just the little things. Those are what coaches talk about, the little things. So with 37 seconds before halftime, you'd figure the Canes would play it pretty conservatively. This is Craig Cooper holding on to the ball. Tough crowd down here. <laughs> is it booze because they want to see him take a shot downfield here in the last few seconds? I took it as cool as in Cooper. For that for the two-yard gain? Hey, if you're a mom, you're, that's what you're saying to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's kind of what you've seen a lot in the ACC this year. You're not that many possessions. You know, Hokies have run 36 plays. Miami's run just 26 plays. Defense is in control, and this thing... 
Probably going to be decided in the last few minutes of the game. Gain strike first. A couple of guys coming off injuries have scored touchdowns in this first half. Javaris James for Miami and Tyrod Taylor for Virginia Tech. And we sit at seven and seven. And Aaron Andrews is with Randy Shannon. Coach, two of your freshmen had two huge sacks tonight, disrupt a, uh, a Hokie series there. What's been the key for your front seven? Well, base some guys been doing a good job in the run game, but we got to be more consistent on the quarterback scramble. It's gotten to hit us a little bit when they when they have a substitution quarterback. We were going to the locker room, make some corrections, make some adjustments, and come back in the second half. You guys were interested to see how your two young quarterbacks would be able to handle the Hokies' hits. They seem fine on the sidelines. What's your message for them for the second half? Then we got to come back out in the second half and protect the football. We had two big time turnovers that stopped drives, and then now we come back. We we don't turn the ball over no matter no matter what happens. We have good field position and everything. So the second half we got to come back out, run the football, take our shots when we have to, but also protect the football. Many thanks. Okay. Yeah, just officially one turnover for the Canes in the first half. They did recover one of their own fumbles to set up a touchdown. Free Davis, Lou Holtz, Mark May, the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Both teams, Chris, obviously, as you guys have mentioned, in the middle of it for the ACC Coastal North Carolina. I'm sure a very interested observer tonight in Virginia Tech and Miami slugging it out. Big hits, terrific catch by Boykin. And we're locked up at halftime. What have been your impressions? Well, I'm very impressed with Miami. Randy Shannon is recruiting because it's starting to pay dividends. If you look at this team last year against Virginia Tech, they gave up 44 points. They couldn't run the football. Negative two yards rushing in that game. At least in this game, they're keeping the score close. It's tied at halftime, and they're running the football. They've rushed for just over 70 yards in the first half. Well, it's a very physical football game, but one with a lot of mistakes, turnovers, etc. The biggest difference between Miami and the great Miami team, the wide receivers. Then those receivers never dropped a pass Made some great catches. I've never seen one group of receivers drop as many passes as Miami has in the last two years. Miami hoping that those guys will mature past that. They're young receivers. They're two young quarterbacks as well. Both teams are playing a couple of quarterbacks, and we're tied at 7 at halftime. Coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, head ball coach has been playing more than one quarterback. He will have a visit with his predecessor at South Carolina, and the Mad Hatter also steps in to talk to Dr. Lou. Chick-fil-A's new peppermint chocolate chip milkshake, available only for the holidays. Welcome to the Capital One Top Tailgater Mascot Challenge. Today, we're cooking burgers. Can you really put tomatoes in a t-shirt cannon? Whoa, look out! I think that's a condiment cannon. He can't control it. Get down! Oh, that's gonna leave a stain. <laughs> Does mustard come out of fur? Vote for your favorite mascot at CapitalOneBowl.com and watch the Capital One Bowl to see who wins. What's in your wallet? In the history of sports, B means a lot of things. But this B borders on unbelievable because only the best of the best of the best can go back to back to back. The chase for the Sprint Cup concludes Sunday at 3 Eastern on ABC. Stars is Kenny May in Main Street, now playing on ESPN.com. IRS problems? Associated Tax Relief can help you. What you're about to see and hear is real. Associated Tax Relief got me a settlement of $500. This company really does what they say they're going to do. We owed the IRS over $135,000. All we did was hire the right people to work for us. Associated Tax saved us $99,000. Associated Tax Relief has helped taxpayers settle their tax debt for less than what they owed. We owed the IRS over $82,000 in back taxes. Associated Tax Relief's attorney was a former IRS agent who knew what to do. His hard work settled our tax debt for only $4,600. Thousands of taxpayers across the nation have put their trust in Associated Tax Relief. I owed nearly $115,000 and needed help fast. Associated Tax settled my tax debt for way less than what I owed. 
They saved me over $93,000. Yes, you can solve your IRS problems, and yes, we can help you. For a free consultation, call 888-576-1239 now. This Halftime Report is powered by Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. Clash for the Mid-American Conference East Division lead, Buffalo and Akron. There's Turner Gill and no one circles the wagons like, like the, the Buffalo Bulls. Drew Willie, Nauman Roosevelt. We just can't get enough mileage out of that, can we? <laughs> Buffalo with a 7-0 lead. They're bidding farewell to the Rubber Bowl after this game, the venerable old stadium in Akron. James Starks putting Turner Gill's team up 17-7. And then Dennis Kennedy would answer for Akron, Coach. Well, here's uh, just a tremendous play here. Akron had their chance. They had a touchdown call back, makes a nice pass here, gets it down there and sets up a field goal, and then the touchdown. Actually, I believe that was the play before the touchdown. That's what happens sometimes when you do what we call in the business cross rolling. Sometimes you cross roll the wrong play. 17 7, that's okay. We know what happened. Lane Kiffin, the former Raiders coach, former USC assistant, interviewed with Clemson for its head coaching job last week. That, according to multiple sources on ESPN.com. Of course, earlier, Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, interviewed for that job as Clemson continues its clandestine search for a head coach to replace Tommy Bowden on a permanent basis. Clandestine because they're flying around the country in an airplane that's purple and orange with a giant tiger paw on the tail. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would never notice that one coming no, in a private airport, would that you? One. Uh -uh. <laughs> Guys, let's play a little speed rush right now. You know how this works. I'll put two minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Each of you can use a timeout to challenge the others your point of view. If you want to, you're, you're calling just time out. I've I mean, practiced it. I I it takes me a while to learn. Okay, <laughs> so you can call the time out. Let's roll the clock at 2.30. And on the subject of that clandestine search, who is the best fit for head coach at Clemson? In my opinion is Gary Patterson from TCU. This is a proven coach, great recruiter, tough, but more importantly, he plays great defense. And Clemson still goes back to the great national championship under Danny Ford where they play great defense. Mark, explain how in the world the coaches poll has Oklahoma ranked ahead of Texas. Because you see, if you get a bunch of coaches voting, they're not very smart. But if you get one coach voting, he is very smart. I can't explain why, because Texas beat Oklahoma head-to-head. -head. That's the only way you can justify and tell teams are better than one the other if they play head-to-head. -head. Time out, coach. Well, I'll tell you why. Because Texas played nobody outside the conference, UCF. Let me tell you who Oklahoma played, possibly two conference champions. They beat Cincinnati, they beat TCU. That's why. May, would, should what? we revisit the 1993 national championship? Oh, don't go yeah. there again. Okay, okay. Roll, we're rolling that clock <laughs> again. Lou, agree or disagree, the SEC just isn't as good as it looked in the preseason. No, oh, I disagree with that completely. Just because Auburn's been a little disappointing, Tennessee's been a little disappointing, there's some teams that are very surprising. You look at Kentucky, you look at South Carolina, you look at Ole Miss, and you still have two teams that will probably play for the right to represent the SEC in the national champion in Florida and Alabama. Mark, should Graham Harrell win the Heisman even if Texas Tech doesn't make it to the championship game? No, not at all, because Colt McCoy has been brilliant. Even in the loss against Texas Tech, he was knocked around in that game. He was physical. He got the job done. He gave Texas the lead late in that football game. Just because his receivers could not catch the football, you can't downgrade him. But if Texas Tech loses to Oklahoma, I put Graham Harrell behind Colt McCoy. So not only a game for the national championship uh, picture, but also for the Heisman Trophy race as well. Lou, as we tick down toward a minute in speed rush, Give Charlie Weiss a grade for this season. I would say he passed with an A minus, and let me tell you why. <coughs> hey, he's playing a young football team. That whole offensive team's coming back. Floyd's one of the great freshman receivers I've seen. He has a young man named Golden Tate, who is a sophomore outstanding. Five offensive linemen coming back. Claus to the quarterback. His whole team's coming back. He's guiding them. He's going to end up 7-5, possibly 8-4. Oh, stop it. Timeout. 8-4, they're not beating USC. They've lost three out of the last four games. If you go back to last year, they're 8-13 in their last 21 games. This year, he still hasn't defeated a winning team. And in the last 16 games, when they played a winning team or winning program, they're 1-15. Okay. 
A minus minus. Oh, come on. You got to <laughs> give them a D. Crap, Jesus, that's right. Give them a you D. You the clock. They expected uh, what? that soft schedule that they were supposed to win nine or ten games this year. Somebody at the beginning of the season said they could be 11 and 0 by the time they play USC. I, I, I thought they could have, and they very easily could have. But, you know, I just think that it's a young football team. It's the same one he had last year. They're much improved. They're going to be even better because it's the same team next year. So let me see. Much improved. Three wins to five or six wins to maybe seven wins next year. Wow, that's big improvement. Notre Dame. Boy, you are really against Notre Dame. I'm just Dame. stating the facts. It's the truth. If it's wrong, please correct me. <laughs> and that is Speed yeah. Rush. <laughs> Rather entertaining. I, I like watching my Hall of Fame running mates just bludgeon one another. <laughs> Speaking of spectacular freshman receivers, you won't see a catch better than that. Hokies couldn't cash it in, though. America's biggest automobile company and its dealers want to help get you the loan you need. It's General Motors financing that fits, offering access to millions of dollars and hundreds of lenders to help get you behind the wheel. It's our way of putting you and America in the driver's seat. During the Red Tag event, the price on the tag is the price you pay. Get a GA for $24,737 for a total value of $2,858. See your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealer. It's my friend's house. I'm allowed to sleep. Hey, buddy. Jeff's phone here. Thanks so much for letting us stay at your place. Oh, and that call about the alarm code. We won't be getting it. Boy, Genius here doesn't have AT&T, so he's got zero bars right now. You're like breaking in the house? Uh, no, I didn't break in anywhere. I'm allowed to be here. If... We're just going to head down to county and make some new friends. Awesome. For the best coverage, switch to AT&T. More bars in more places. I helped him pick it out. Get an exclusive quick messaging phone for $79.99 after mail-in rebate. Your pizza delivery guy. Well, come on in, man. What you waiting on? Mouth-watering toppings, fresh-baked pizzeria taste. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Delivery pizza minus the delivery price equals DiGiorno. For fresh delivery taste without the delivery price, it's DiGiorno. Find out who the final Week 7 store as the fight for a championship intensifies. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Boston College, Florida State or Oklahoma State, Colorado. Saturday at 8 Eastern, College Football lives here. Well, of all the great advice that Dr. Lou has given to college football people this year, after seeing how he graded in the Notre Dame coaching staff, it's fair to wonder whether he can dispense that tough love. Let's see if it's needed. Doctor! Dr. Lou, Dr. Lou, that's Dr. Lou, Dr. Lou, Dr. Lou. The doctor will see you now. 10% of you won't remember 10% of what I said 10 minutes after I said it, but I hope it will cause you to think. I hope all of you will have the desire to dream, the courage to risk, the faith to believe, and the will to succeed. Now our first question. Dr. Lou, Dr. Lou, Steve Spurrier here asking you, what would you do or what advice would you have for me and the South Carolina Gamecocks when we're going to face who some people say is the best team in the country, the Florida Gators, a team I used to coach a long time ago. But what was your advice uh, to us to give us a chance down there? Well, Steve, thank you for calling. And whole family will always be indebted to you and your wife, Jerry, for the kindness extended to my wife, Beth, when she was fighting cancer in Gainesville. I'm not very smart, Steve. Greatest accomplishment I did academically was I solved a very difficult jigsaw puzzle in only 18 months. And that impressed me because on the box it said four to six years. Steve, you know how to build a championship. You did it in Florida. You're doing it at South Carolina. You and I both know that greatness starts with standards and expectations. But be careful of their punt returner, Brandon James. He plays tennis. What's impressive about that? He plays by himself. And remember this, the state of South Carolina motto. Dum Spiro Sparrow. Well, I breathe, I hope. Now our next question. Dr. Lou, Les Miles. Uh, the question I have is, is a guy that's uh, been as successful in coaching as you have in your career, what were your uh, pre-game rituals that uh, helped you prepare to win so many games? Well, there were two things I thought were important on game day. First of all, we wakened our players with orange juice and a newspaper. I wanted them in a good mood from the time they awakened. The second thing, our team recited a prayer at the pregame meal, 
They lived with many of them to even to today. And it went like this. This is the beginning of a new day. God has given me this day to use I will. I can waste it, I can use it for good. What I do today is important because I'm exchanging a day out of my life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever leaving in this place that which I have traded. I want it to be gained, not lost, good, not evil, success, not failure. In order that I should not regret the price I paid for it, because the future is just a whole string of nows. And now for a closing comment. There's two educations you should receive. One's an education on how to make a living, and the other is an education on how to live. Don't worry about making a living. Worry about making a life. And remember, even if you win the rat race, you're still a rat. See you next week. Doctor! Doctor Lou, Doctor Lou, that's Doctor Lou. Doctor Lou, Doctor Lou, the doctor is out. <laughs> I stand corrected. If you can call everybody in America a rat, you can certainly uh, dispense some tough love there, Dr. Lou. <laughs> Miami and Virginia Tech, square at seven. Second half's not too far away. For the price of a night in, how about a night out? Introducing Applebee's two for 20 menu. Full on dinner for two people for 20 bucks. Choose one great appetizer to share and two amazing entrees, like our juicy seven ounce sirloin, our signature double crunch shrimp, and so much more. So take your wife or your sister. Sure, take him. It's Applebee's two for 20, and it's the best meal and the best deal in the neighborhood. Congrats, gotta say you've done your research. Oh yeah, we went on cars.com, we compared models side by side, found out the price we should be paying. Feeling pretty good. You should. And I didn't have to resort to plan B. Oh, what's plan B? In order to get you to agree to my terms quickly, I was gonna have you eat these brownies, which I mixed with a horse laxative. Excuse me, keep talking. My husband kinda has a sweet tooth. The University of Miami is on the move. We're revealing the mysteries of the world from the eye of the hurricane to the human genome. We're creating oceans of knowledge and helping to shape citizens of the world. We're making a difference right now in the classroom, the laboratory, and on our playing fields. So keep watching us. The University of Miami, it's all about the you. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Where no two corn fields are alike, choice is the key to success. Only one company and your pioneer sales professional can call on one of the world's largest, most diverse sources of corn genetics to offer you more than 250 proprietary hybrids and the industry's broadest insect protection to get the right product on the right acre and maximize your yield potential. See your pioneer sales professional. At the end of last season, June 17th, Paul Pierce and the Celtics completed the renaissance of Boston. A little help from the big ticket, Kevin Garnett. And the Celtics knocked out the Lakers in the NBA Finals to win the World Championship. You will be able to see both teams, the Eastern Conference and World Champions and the Western Conference Champions. Celtics hosting the Nuggets and Chauncey Billups, 8 o'clock Eastern time on NBA Friday. And then Allen Iverson and the Pistons traveling west to take on the Lakers. It all starts with Kia NBA shoot-around, 7.30 Eastern. Brett Favre just whistled a touchdown pass to Jericho Cotchery, 24-6. Jets putting a spanking on New England, but they are not yet at halftime. Time for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the week, and it comes... From Alabama, Rashad Johnson, the third of his three interceptions on the day. This one coming on the first possession in overtime, giving Alabama an opportunity to answer, which they did with a touchdown, and the number one team in the land survived a trip to Baton Rouge. Alabama getting 62% of the vote to get $5,000 in the general scholarship fund. Courtesy of Pontiac, you can vote every week 
log on to ESPN.com, search Pontiac, cast your vote, and enter for a chance to win a scholarship for yourself. This halftime report is powered by Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. America's biggest automobile company and its dealers want to help get you the loan you need. It's General Motors financing that fits, offering access to millions of dollars and hundreds of lenders to help get you behind the wheel. It's our way of putting you and America in the driver's seat. During the red tag event, the price on the tag is the price you pay. Get a Sierra for $18,913 for a total value of $7,202. See your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealer. Celebration Diamond, Zale's most brilliant diamond ever. have come to this maternity ward to test the new Duralast Gold C-Max ceramic brakes, built with a revolutionary shim technology that dens vibration for superior ultra-quiet stopping performance. To prove this, we've enlisted the help of several very light sleepers. There you have it, new super-quiet C-Max brakes from Duralast. Duralast, proven tough. together one touchdown drive in the first half the Hokies have a statistical edge the Canes will get the ball to start the third quarter Chris Fowler back with Craig James Jesse Palmer and Aaron Andrews about what you expected well it's what Miami coaches expected out of Virginia Tech they wanted to play close not make mistakes and keep it close to the fourth quarter with a chance to win on the road which has been their motto when they come down south I think we all thought heading into this game it was going to be a defensive struggle which is why Greg Cooper's fumble in the first half really to me has been the difference in this game so far it's hard enough to score points against both of these defenses anyway so you cannot afford to cock the football up that's the one turnover in the first half gains just five first downs and they made a change Dustin Keyes will now kick it off Justin Meyer boots some short ones in the first half they'll go to Keyes who's a senior and the regular field goal kicker it's a very short directional kick and dropping back to receive it is Daryl Sharp to the linebacker showed some pretty good hands with the over the shoulder catch and to start at the 30 Craig our Home Depot coaching adjustments. Well you know what when you talk about Miami's defense they have to figure out how to contain Taylor. That's the one big play guy that has shown the ability to make plays for Virginia Tech and then for Miami Jesse man just to finish it off. Well Virginia Tech's come out and taken advantage of their big play opportunities in the passing game. Miami has not. Big, dro big drops by Travis Benjamin Kane Farquharson. They're going to run the football in this game, but when they get their chances to hurt Virginia Tech throwing it, they have to capitalize. And they hand it to Cooper running left. He'll lose yardage. Brett Warren, Jason Worlds pursuing him as we check in with Aaron Andrews. See, yeah. You guys had a chance to talk to head coach Frank Beamer on the way out and I said coach I'm trying to get a feel for this game and he said yeah help me out with it too. He said the biggest thing that he stressed in the locker room during the half was to his offensive line better protection better blocking. He said, 
that's one of the reasons why they really only have 53 yards rushing on the ground. Guys, also an update on Miami's offense. Travis Benjamin, he is doubtful to return. He missed most of the second quarter with what appears to be a left leg injury. Aaron, thank you. There's the completion to Johnson. Al Darius Johnson to the 40-yard line. I was just going to say, no Travis Benjamin could be trouble. He's the big play for Miami, and uh, Johnson rips off a big game. Uh, well, right now, both offensive lines are struggling, and so therefore, you got to get it away from the middle of the field. Watch how nice job Mark gets the ball out. Look at the uh, Johnson's eyes of getting through traffic. Well, here's the bad news. Travis Benjamin likely out of the game. The good news is 18 different Miami Hurricane players have caught a pass this season. This guy right here, Aldarius Johnson, the true freshman, probably the best route runner. Watch for his production now to increase in the second half. 18 guys with a catch. That's third most in the country. Here's the flea flicker. Marv gets it back from Cooper. And a look downfield. Now he'll fire to the near sideline. And it's caught. Johnson came back, not how he drew it up, but a nice game to the 26. Virginia Tech gave up on it. Bottom line, Virginia Tech's defense gave up on it. They covered the deep ball where he wanted to go with the number one round. Johnson had three guys around him. Give Aldarius Johnson a ton of credit. As a true freshman, a great job coming back and working for his quarterback. Robert Mark doesn't have what he wants right off the bat. Aldarius Johnson working for his quarterback, running towards the, the sideline to give somewhere for the football to be thrown. Nice job by the true freshman. Take a look at Benjamin as Johnson has stepped up his first two catches of the night, gaining 29 and now 16 yards. And Marv is pressured quickly, shows the quickness. The redshirt freshman out of Plant High School in Tampa. He's got pretty quick feet. And he's got a lively arm. But how about Miami's offense coming out making a statement? Throwing the football and even the flea flicker. That sends a message over to Bud Foster on his defense. But it was the first big play this Miami offense has had in the passing game. But here we are yet again on the 25-yard line. If you're Patrick Nix, you know Bud Foster's going to start dialing up the heat. Expect lots of pressure. That's exactly what happened in the second half against Maryland. Chris Turner for the Terrapins got hot. Then Bud Foster and his defense got to Turner and threw him off rhythm. This is Marv. Another design run, and Marv diving to the six. You heard Jim Kelly say earlier in an interview with us that the quarterbacks here aren't really looking beyond the first route guy. Now, I know he's thinking about running right here, but that secondary and the linebacker level got to find him. We talked to Bud Foster earlier in the week, and he said on defense they have to keep the Miami quarterbacks in the pocket. Bud Foster respects the athletic abilities of Robert Marv and Ja'Cory Harris, and you see right there Robert Marv able to hurt this defense with his legs. He's got 50 yards rushing now by far the leader in the game tonight. Cooper's behind him on first and goal. Marv. This time hit at the five. Brett Warren on the stop. He, he looked like he wanted to throw in the end zone. You know who hasn't showed up for Virginia Tech tonight? We haven't said number six, Jason World's name, have we? Nope, hasn't, didn't have a sack yet. And he got after it last week against Maryland. He's a guy, he's a real warrior, playing with a separated shoulder. He's going to need surgery on that shoulder when the season's over. You're right, though, Craig. Way more active last week against Maryland. They're going to need him to step up big here. Second to goal. Cooper's got it. He's only a yard. And Burnell Sturdivant, the sturdy senior middle linebacker, leading tackler on this defense there for the stop. How about that matchup, Jesse? You were laughing about come driving over to the stadium today. Patrick Hill, 5'9", 262 at fullback against Peace Stump. Purnell Sturdivant, 5'10", 225. I think you're on third goal to four. Marv, obviously, they'll, they'll be watching for his design runs. I'd expect pressure here from Bud Foster. Straight back, looking in the end zone, fighting, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. They were all over the quarterback runs there. 
Yeah, absolutely, Fowler. Because, you know, that Bud thought about the pressure on this thing, but he also had the back of his head, too, that Robert Marv can hurt him with the run. Watch the linebacker level back here. They're going to stay back there, and they're, they're looking for that, that quarterback leaving the pocket. Well, here's the deal. As a linebacker, you're defending the goal line. You don't have to sink deeper than that, so they just line up on the goal line. They're closer to the action, able to converge on Robert Marr for the tackle. Look at that nice discipline there on that Virginia Tech defense, and here's Matt Bosher for a chip shot. Very accurate. 13 of 15 hasn't missed inside of 40 yards. And this is just 21, and he just sneaks it inside the left upright. So Miami takes the second half kickoff. It's a field goal. Leads 10 7. You girls have fun. It's time to unleash your inner Santa. Head to Santa's other workshop, The Home Depot, the one place with everything you need to make your home festive, inside and out, all at guaranteed low prices, now even lower. Bring the holidays home for less at The Home Depot. So last month, I was in a hotel elevator with, you're never going to believe this, Mary J. Blige. I just wanted to scream. What's the 411 changed my life? I've seen you in concert five times. I sing your songs in the shower. I even know your birthday, January 11th. Problem was, my mouth didn't work. Now, every time you use a participating city card, you're in it for a chance to win an amazing in-studio experience with Mary J. Blige. Hey! Want the story of a lifetime? Your city card can help you write it. Unstoppable. Paula Creamer is. So is her Citizen Echo Drive watch. Fueled by light, it never needs a battery. It's unstoppable, just like the people who wear it. Looks like a sandwich with the taste of a prime rib dinner. Quizno's newest prime rib, only $3.99. Real prime rib, the king of meats. Slow roasted to bring out all its tender and juicy flavor. Sliced thin with an extra layer of prime rib piled high. All toasted to perfection on rosemary parmesan bread. Real prime rib for only $3.99. Only at Quizno's. Mmm, Quizno's. Love what you eat. Behold the sword of Erlacher. <laughs> that was me, Brian Erlacher. Then I started using swagger from Old Spice. Who's laughing now? <laughs> me. Hey, you have your tickets right? <laughs> to what, you ask? Well, the, oh, the Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship. The 48-hour celebration of ACC football played this year in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida. You know, palm trees, sandy beaches, and this year, a lot of ACC football action. So get your tickets now for the December 6th Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship. Because if you wait too long, it may be too late. Well, the great Jim Otto, war number 50 in Miami, double zero with the Raiders. He was the first Hurricane to be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Jim Kelly visited with him earlier, joining Vinny Testiver and George Myra Sr. There's the nasty Cortez Kennedy. We'll talk to him in just a second. Gino Toretta, yet another quarterback. Heisman Trophy winner, inducted into the Ring of Honor tonight. And Andrew James, also inducted, of course, couldn't be here because the cards are getting ready for the Seahawks on Sunday. He was given a nice round of applause. So five new names. Pantheon, final home game of 2008. Haynes. With the lead now, once again, 10 7 to kick it off. Darrell Roberts. Hit hard. Still alive, but he'll be dropped at the 10. Old Sam Shields used to absorbing hits as a receiver got down there and delivered a blow. Uh, you know what? Sam Shields is a guy that's stepping up because of all the youth around him at wide receiver to be a part of the special teams. Whew. Yeah, he's been a big impact guy on special teams. Sometimes in the dog has a receiver. All these young guys have come in and kind of stolen his thunder. He's found a way to contribute. Sam Shields obviously doesn't do a lot of tackling drills. You don't see the great form wrapping up there, but a little blow-up shot in the face, not bad. I don't care about fundamentals, Bob. I mean, he's going to be used to deliver a shot to somebody. <laughs> it's a very poor peel position for Tyrod Taylor. Taylor cuts back against the green, and he takes a big blow from Joe Joseph. 
They get a defensive lineman who could deliver big blows. Cortez Kennedy with Aaron. He's not all that nasty, CF. I gotta tell you, having a good time. I, I read when you got the phone call that you were gonna be honored in the ring of honor, that you were very humbled. What was that phone call like for you? Coach Sandra Coleman told me that I had a chance to be in the ring honor. I couldn't believe it. You know, we got so many great players here at the University of Miami, but I'm very humble and very thrilled to be in the, in the ring honor. He's hoping the current Canes defense can step up right here. This is Evans who gets nothing, and it's an inspired bunch of Miami defenders right now, Aaron. Certainly is, Chris. And as you mentioned, Randy Shannon, a very close friend of yours, also a teammate here in Miami. You live in Orlando now, actually lives next door to Dr. Lou Holtz, by the way. What have you seen? What has Randy done so far in his two years here to help get the program back? Randy brought a discipline to the uh, football team. He also uh, bring the education for our football players and also that um, he's going to bring the national championship back to Miami in the next uh, two years. And plus, he's doing a great job uh, recruiting. Taylor drops. What a series by this Haynes defense is Marcus Robinson, one of the true freshmen, got there for his second sack. Aaron? I got to ask, as you're sitting here, what do you think of these big hits by your former team here? What do you think of those big hits by the Kings defense? Oh, the defense remind me of the days when we played with Russell Mellon, Greg Mart. Hey, we're back. Give us a couple more years, we're going to be back. Cortez, thanks so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Did you, hear, did you hear him slip in there, that prediction we're going to win the national title within two years? Ooh. His former teammate. <laughs> it's a young team. It's a young team. You see the expectations here after yeah. you. Yeah, you know, not about winning the division of the ACC two years in a national title, huh? Now, Brett Bowden boots it out of bounds, and this is going to be excellent field position for Miami. Let's see where the spot comes at the 35. So the shank, 31 yards, but all set up by the great kickoff coverage and the aggressive defensive series. And, and the ailing special teams of Frank Beamer continue here this year at Virginia Tech. And a reminder, college football Saturday, following game day at noon Eastern time, the Buckeyes visit Ron Zook's Fighting Illini, and at noon, presented by Cars.com. So we'll see if Miami can build on a three-point lead, cash in on this great field position. Robert Marv, who's gotten most of the action tonight, over to Corey Harris. He's a quarterback. Pump fed, fires downfield, and it's almost intercepted. Cam Chancellor broke on the ball. It was almost the, the veteran making the young guy pay. Chancellor's one of those guys that's very smart, plays deep, and does not bite on the screen. If it was a poor job, really, of the route running. They didn't sell it right. Again, Cam Chancellor arrived at Virginia Tech as a quarterback, so he has that mentality playing deep in the secondary. You can watch Robert Marm's eyes. He reads route concepts extremely well from the safety position. Doris James back in the ball here now on second and ten. He turned the corner and skipped out of bounds after about a three yard gain. Demetrius Taylor forced him out. How about Chancellor though? Guy apparently was on the five on five intramural champions with, 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 with Tyrod Taylor. I mean, that, that's pretty darn impressive when you can get out and play hoops, football, you can do everything. That's, that's an I would hope they would have won the intramural thing. It, Two varsity football players. Well, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, you got some pretty darn good guys in the college ranks. Ironically, Taylor enough. can hoop. Yeah, get up. <laughs> so, crucial third down play. James is in the slot to the near side. Empty backfield for Marv. Look, he's showing pressure up the middle. They back off. And Marv has a man in the seams. Caught. Javaris James coming out of that slot position, makes the catch, takes it to the 12. I'm so impressed with Javaris James coming off that ankle injury, not just coming out and playing, but being a factor, not in the running game, but also in the passing game. Craig, how many running backs do you know that can line up in the slot and run 15-yard dig routes like that? And have the focus, knowing the safety is sitting back there that's going to smack you in the mouth to catch the football. Bud Foster, the D coordinator, is going to change it up a little bit. Remember earlier, he had the fire zone where he dropped the tackle into the middle of the field and took away that passing play. Foster looking for answers. You can see that Robert Marr is feeling it right now. And hands off to James, and then 
between the tackle runner muscles down to the 10 yard line. You know, I think the magic number for Miami's offense today is 25. Gray Cooper, Jamaris James. When they each get at least 25 carries, this Miami team is 6 and 2. E e e each at least 25. When they the combined, combined for yeah. 25. When they don't, this team's 2 and 6. So right now, both running backs getting a steady diet. They got to keep that up if they're going to win this game. Juggled, almost intercepted. It hit the ground, could have been caught. The ball was pinballing around in there. Aaron Collier couldn't control it. Obviously, Jason Worlds, number six, he's not the same player that he was last week. That shoulder's bothering him. And very fortunate, Miami, that did. This ricocheted football is not picked off. I love that play call by Patrick Nix. We learned that Theron Collier, really the best pure playmaker on Miami. So when you get down close inside the red zone, try to get your playmakers the ball fast. Unfortunately for Miami, though, the execution just not there. It's the kind of play you see, you know, Texas Tech and Oklahoma and Texas execute so flawlessly. You kind of take it for granted, but it, it's not that easy. Marv. Wants to take off and run, and they're all over him. And there is Jason Worlds making the stop. So his first real big impact play of the night. Just so smart in the defensive line. They've been talking about it on the sidelines by Bud Foster. Don't overrun Robert Marv right now. What's the good news for Miami, beginning the second half, they get two drives down into the red zone. The bad news is they're not able to convert and capitalize for touchdowns. Matt Bosher, Mr. Automatic from this range from 31 yards. And the lead is six. So the Hokies offense back to work against that tough Kane Steve when you come back. Hey Vincent! Go stay! Hey Ham. Why did that guy call you Vincent? Because that's my real name, Bergwood. It is? How do you know that? He's my all-state agent. Oh, he insures your car. And my boat. You got a boat? Ah, oh, my wife is a big time skier. <laughs> you married? All state agents know who you really are and what you really need. Call one today for a free Good Hands coverage checkup. Are you in good hands? Where'd you meet your wife? Pilates. Ah, uh, she's European. Introducing Taco Bell's new 89 cent volcano taco. With spicy lava sauce, it could be the spiciest taco ever. Can we eat my volcano taco? <laughs> Don't look at me. Why pay more for heat when you can think outside the bun? You knew a lot about this car. Uh, I did my research on cars.com. Plus, now I don't have to use plan B. What's plan B? I was going to have a witch doctor shrink your head if you didn't give me what I wanted. <clears throat> Jay, can I take off? I got a tiny head. Sorry about that. I should get him out of here. Today. Well, here I come. Meet a rule breaking. Now stay down. Wise cracking. You will pay for what happened to my friend. You take checks. Butt kicking superhero. Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. 3 dish special edition. Available for a limited time only today. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Oh, good. <laughs> 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 Jack Link's Jerky. Feed your wild side. I'm comfortable in jeans that are tough. I'm comfortable in Wrangler. Real comfortable. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Satisfaction guaranteed. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by... Allstate, proud sponsor of college football and the 75th Allstate Sugar Bowl. Are you in good hands? We do enjoy our Thursday night trips to Miami about this time of year, don't we? Just a gorgeous day here. Good year with the aerial coverage. Football's rough. Your commute shouldn't be. So get there in good year silent armor technology. Just kind of a rough commute up I-95 to the game here. Now, not that many 
or as many Miami students make the drive up frankly from the campus of Coral Gables they provide buses but they say they're selling more tickets to the folks in the North Dade and Broward County. The move here from the Orange Bowl by the way they say it's worth more than four million extra bucks because they can sell the sweets here. The, the old Orange Bowl was short on sweets. <laughs> Roberts and he's hammered at the 15 so Miami is starting to land some some big blows here in the early part of the third quarter. The orange roll is no more. They knocked well, it down, huh? They may have been short on sweets at the Orange Bowl, but they were large on championships and winning streaks. No, oh, so many, so many magic memories. It really is sad. There's so many of the great stadiums that echo with the great memories in sports. The Orange Bowl included, knocked down. Talking about what to do with that that space and maybe a new ballpark for the Marlins. Of course, we share this home with the Hurricanes and the Dolphins. Hokies down six. Go back to work from the 16. This is Sean Glennon at quarterback. And off the school record monster game, Evans has been controlled and Miami's laying the lumber now. It's pretty obvious in this second half, Miami just playing faster. They're playing at a different speed right now than Virginia Tech. And I think Darren Evans, who had such a great game last week with the school record rushing 253, is running with his eyes down. He's not seeing it. He's got to look for the holes and let his instincts take control like he did last week. You know, the one exception to that Duke got a late touchdown in the lopsided Miami win, but they've been very stout after halftime. This is Evans again. It's a defense that Bill Young said exceeded his expectations. He was the coordinator member for Kansas when they smothered the Hokies on this field in the Orange Bowl. Aaron? Chris talking about Darren Evans. Remember last week, of course, when he went off on Maryland, we had those great shots of his young son, James, well, not really watching, sleeping on his father's, his grandfather's shoulders. Well, apparently Virginia Tech feels that James is such a good luck charm. They wanted to bring him here tonight. They wanted to get him on the charter down here, but I don't think James could make it through another game. He was pretty tired out. A two-year-old good luck charm. Holly, his dad is not having that kind of night tonight. He they have been smothered for 12 runs of two or less yards tonight by this Miami defense. Glennon feeling pressure that really wasn't there, and now it is. It's a sack before he threw it away. You can see, Jesse, I think he got a little gun shy there. Well, again, the speed right now is just different from this defensive line of Miami. And really, Craig, what we talked about earlier coming into the second half, this Miami D line's done a better job keeping the quarterbacks in the pocket. Yeah, but you know what? As you let the play develop just a little bit, watch what the linebackers do. They rush three, and then the linebackers peel off, and they come. And Glennon's seeing linebackers. He's not seeing routes. Fifth Miami sack. And Bowden will punt it away. Games really taking control. Should have pretty good field position again. Bowden gets it away. This is a good boot. Backs up Collier. And he makes the catch at the 48-yard line. So another Miami possession to start in plus territory. And that defense getting it done here in the third. I'm gonna grab a light beer. You want one? Nah, beer fills me up. Hang on. Fills you up? Really? Two hours of shoving pizza in your pie hole? Fills you up. Face full of dough and an arm full of rocks. Fill you up. Polish sausage, Italian beef, Swedish meatballs, and the rest of the world tour here fills you up. But I'll tell you what doesn't fill you up. Bud Light. Because it has drinkability. A just right taste that won't fill you up. Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. It happens to every guy. While you sleep, your skin dehydrates. Prepare to defeat dry skin with Gillette Dry Skin Hydrator and Body Wash. It combines a deep cleaning body wash with three times the hydrators for a powerful defense against dry skin. You'll step out of the shower feeling like you can take on the world. Gillette 2-in-1 Dry Skin Hydrator and Body Wash. Unleash the power of your shower. Nothing keeps a good man down. The forces cause the discs to explode. John Cena returns to action. And he's spoiling for a fight. WWE Survivor Series, live Sunday, November 23rd on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. 
this month on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. I want to protect the people I put in harm's way. Yeah, I can fly. I love you. Are you breaking up with me? Why don't you go on a vacation? You just by yourself? Yeah. What are you doing here? This is a disaster. She's I'm dating somebody. Ah! Skywalker is in trouble. We're under attack. Battle position. Direct TV pay-per-view. Just press a button and you're watching your movie. Welcome back to Miami. College football prime time presented by Applebee's. An NBA doubleheader tomorrow starts at 8 Eastern with the Nuggets and the Celtics. It will be the Pistons against the Lakers. Kia NBA shoot-around starts at all at 7.30. Trailblazers staying in our, our hotel down here with Greg Oden returning to the floor when beat the Heat last night in Miami. And Sean Glennon searching for answers. No doubt talking with Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator. They have not been able to slow down Miami's rush at all. And now we'll see if the Canes can build on the six-point lead. Here's where the Hokie defense needs to step up. They stop Cooper for no game. Well, you talk about that tech offense in this quarter. Minus 11 yards, sacked three times, no first downs. And because of the defense's improved play, Miami now in this half has started their possessions right at midfield or better. So they're able to capitalize with points. Haven't been able to score a touchdown yet, but still getting the ball back in midfield with an opportunity to go in and score. We had the opening field goal drive in this quarter. And you see Jason Worlds, who's been nursing that shoulder, really playing in a lot of pain. Greg mentioned needs surgery. He's been helped off, so they don't have their playmaking defensive end. This is Cooper. Cuts it back. Craig Cooper galloping into the secondary and down to the 36. 12 yards. Running back coach Tommy Robinson in Miami said, hey, Craig, what do you think about these guys? How do they compare? Of course, Robinson coached LT at TCU. When you watch this cut, Jesse, watch how violent he is out of the cut. An explosion. Boom. It's great peripheral vision as well as he's running with his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, but you're right. Great vision, great cutting ability, dangerous player in space. That's what Miami has a lot of, though. It's play action. Marv took a look downfield and now dives for about three. That's what Jim Kelly was talking about. Isn't it, Jesse? I mean, you know, there's no second or third progression. That's what I was just going to say. It's funny. If, if his primary target's not open, he's tucking it and he's running. And as Robert Marv develops more in this system, as he becomes more mature, as he gets older, he's going to learn to look for his second and third target. He doesn't have to tuck it and run so quickly. It's a tough defense, though, for a young quarterback. Bud Foster bringing all these various pressures from different places. He's rattled veteran quarterbacks, much less a redshirt freshman. They go to Cooper. Cooper gets the corner. Greg Cooper skips out of bounds with a first down at the 22. But this is a patient coaching staff. Randy Shannon was sharing with us yesterday, look, we're going to go four or five plays in a week and really perfect them and then scrimmage at the end of the week, make sure we know what we're doing. It's amazing. Greg Cooper led his team in rushing last year as a freshman. He's looking to become only the second Hurricane running back to lead his team in rushing in consecutive seasons. It's never happened here, which is really, when you think about all the great runners who've come through here, not to have back-to-back. A lot of guys, you know, didn't didn't play. We're, we're called on to play you know, two, three years in a row because there were good guys ahead of him. Jay Anderson, the first great running backs here at Miami, and that'll be the last play of the third quarter. A period completely dominated by the hometown Hurricanes, up by six, and in scoring position when the final quarter begins. The dramatic conclusion in the chase for the Sprint Cup, Sunday at 3 Eastern on ABC. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the much-anticipated matchup between the Eagles and the Bulldogs. Ho hold on. I'm not quite sure what we're seeing right now, but cows are parachuting onto the field. I cannot believe what I'm watching. Two cows landing on the field. There's a third headed into the stands. <laughs> it's actually headed right towards a burger. For Look out! Oh my, that's going on the highlight reel.
Red Bull gives you wings. Mark, we have teams on both coasts that are interested, but Milos only wants to play for Dallas. Milos really wants to play for Brussels. Milos only wants to play for Shanghai. Buenos Aires. Frankfurt. Paris. Milos really wants to play for Rome. How's your Japanese? We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. I'm not sure I'll do this anymore. I'm done with you. The distance. It takes its toll. I need to go faster. I don't know. I'm at a crossroads. Your relationship with running has you caught in a twisted tango between love and hate. You thought about leaving it more than once. Renew your love for running. The New Balance 805 and exclusive 830 running shoes. I guess I'm not done with you yet. Now at Dick's Sporting Goods. The way the stock market's been acting lately, you may wonder if you've been doing the right thing. Is the advice you've been getting helping or hurting? Are the fees you're paying really worth it? TD Ameritrade's fees are fair and straightforward. Their research is independent and unbiased. Their investment consultants are knowledgeable and there when you need them. So why not talk to one? Call, click, or visit a TD Ameritrade branch today. Talked about the Ford 400 to Homestead, a little bit south of here, Sunday, 3 o'clock Eastern Time on ABC. As Jimmy Johnson tries to get that 48 car out on the track, get it around a few laps, and secure an incredible third straight Sprint Cup championship. That is just a piece of history that you can, you can check out on Sunday. They'll secure that, then they'll have a race and see who takes no, the final right. checker flag of the season. Good day's NASCAR. Price of gasoline's going down. <laughs> This is Cooper again, spinning for a couple. Let's go to Aaron. Chris, much respect for Jason Worlds. He came out of the game for what it seemed like about three minutes. His left shoulder was completely dislocated. This training staff for the Hokies had about four guys working on him, trying to get a different angle to pop the shoulder back in. Training staff just telling me he was so sweaty, we couldn't get a good grip on him. Took a couple of aspirin, taped him back up. Jason World's back in, guys. You know what? That just how that is. When it comes out, then it gets easier the next time, and you just got to. And, and it's okay once it comes back. Tomorrow's when he's going to feel it. Marv rolls out and flips it out of bounds. That was Worlds right there pursuing him. There's nothing wrong with his legs. He was tracking down number nine, and there was nobody open downfield. Maybe if he throws it on time, he has a, he has Sam Shields. Look, he's tardy, you know, not coming out of there, letting it go to that back pylon. Hard throw, but he had a shot at it. I think he's being cautious down here, the six-point lead. They're already in field goal range. Got to go up two scores with the way your defense is playing. How about Jacor Harris? You do here? not. I hate to sound like our old guy, Mr. Corso, Mr. Conservative, but you do not want a turnover down here right now, right? <laughs> What's that saying he says just going to have to beat you? Yeah, I just but, in the surest way, which would be take three, go up nine. Marv in traffic. It's caught by Johnson, and he loses the football, but it's scooped up by a hurricane. Farkerson, the second time a Miami receiver has been right there to recover a fumble downfield. It's going to set him up at first and goal. Macho Harris forced the fumble against Johnson. Well, this is not how you draw it up offensively if you're Patrick Nix. Bud Foster again bringing a lot of pressure. Aldarius Johnson on the screen pass trying to break the tackle. Ball comes out. They give Kane Parkinson a lot of credit just for being aware to scoop that football up and help continue this drive. They've only lost three fumbles all year. Miami's only lost three fumbles all year. That's incredible. They've been able to recover most of them. And two big fumble recoveries tonight as they'll review this play. Review. Maybe to see whether or not the ball was caught before okay. the fumble. Okay. As it turns out, it ended up working in the Canes' favor. Did you see Bud Foster on the sidelines reading his lips? Dang it. Let's see, it looks like he's got possession. He took a couple of steps with the ball tucked in, I thought. Uh, definitely a catch. Looked to me a little bit. 
But Johnson, he was kind of loafing on the play. He wasn't screaming across the middle of the field. You see Macho Harris there doing a really nice job just ripping that football out. That's so hard as a receiver, runner, when somebody else already has their hand in there on your leverage. That's a catch. Yep. That was Chancellor, you know, colliding in there. Different Hokies had a chance to go up with it. He said a turnover would completely perhaps give the Hokies a chance to turn around momentum. Home teams have had an edge in the ACC. What do you mean? Just in, just yeah, just in, just in general? general. Just oh, that, in the general. Most the ruling on the field is confirmed. Yeah, but I, mean, I, I, I thought you were going to say with, with reviews or something. No, no, no. Only about a third to a quarter of the of the reviews have resulted in an overturned call in the ACC this season. That call stands, and the Canes now a chance to, to punch it in and really build a commanding lead. Like Miami here just to get physical just pound the football straight ahead three tries maybe four to punch this thing in it's, it's your guy Hill Jesse the 262 pound fullback in front of Cooper and he follows him into the hole but not much there wow good job of the Hokies of stuffing that what, what kind of stance does Patrick Hill have <laughs> did you see that usual that's a bullfrog stance I guess he, his balance he, is kind of back, huh? He, he is. He's, he's, he's squatting low. <laughs> you remember earlier in the game, Miami got down close to the goal line. They brought in Jabaris James at running back, the more physical runner. He's able to gash him in for a touchdown. That might be the running back to use here inside the five-yard line. So close. You need a physical style runner. You see Cooper down on one knee showing some fatigue maybe in this huddle. There's a big there guy. Is. It's funky, huh? <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> you know, two shot at SMU. <laughs> Farkerson in motion. Marv still has it. Rolling out. Cuts it back. Leaving oh. was way to lose about two. Brunel oh. Sturdivant has been all over the quarterback in the red zone tonight. Robert Marv is a very athletic quarterback, but I would suspect he doesn't want to cut it against the grain no, Lord, like Lord. that, especially deep down here. Right now, it's not there. Throw the football away. Don't start running back into all those white jerseys. Bud Foster's defense is just really smart when he gets down in the goal line area here. They know what they're trying to defend. They're defending against Robert Marr running the ball. And, and hey, the worst thing you can do is to over pursue or over run Marr. You see how risky to get on third and goal. Cooper is the back. And they throw a fade over the head of Johnson. Nacho Harris, their best cover guy, was guarding the true freshman, and that wasn't close. And here comes Basher for another field goal. That attack. play had no chance from the outset. It was a great job of Macho Harris immediately taking outside position and therefore taking away the fade throw for Darius Johnson. But there's the Corso theory coming through for you, Fowler. <laughs> Get your three. Go up by nine. Yes. Marshall has been good from 21 and 31. And this is about 28 yards. He's going to win the Groves Award if they keep setting him up for those chip shots. Huh? Miami now leads it by nine. Urgency for the Hokies offense. Davis, this is OnStar. I've received a signal you've been in a crash. I'm contacting emergency services. OnStar reporting a front-end crash on Wakefield. Chevy Malibu, airbags deployed, injuries reported. Ma'am, help is on the way. Okay, and I'll stay on the line with you till they get there. Automatic crash response, built into 11 Chevy models. Introducing Taco Bell's new 89 cent volcano taco. With spicy lava sauce, it could be the spiciest taco ever. Can we eat my volcano taco? <laughs> Don't look at me. Why pay more for heat when you can think outside the bun? Behold the sword of Erlacher. <laughs> that was me, Brian Erlacher. Then I started using swagger from Old Spice. Who's laughing now? <laughs> me. You leave the job site dirty and tired. Your muscles ache and you're hungry. 
You grab some Campbell's chunky, fully loaded soup, beef stew, and mull over that little confrontation you had with a coworker. You eat hungrily, filling up on lean meat protein. Yeah, protein is good. Your mind returns to that work incident, and you think, that got resolved pretty well. Campbell's chunky, fill up on the good stuff. Okay, Tommy. Beep, hey, Nancy's phone. Nancy doesn't have AT&T, so no bars here. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting the call about how Freddy the fun-loving dinosaur's costume was damaged. Apparently, they're sending T-Rex. Yeah, we missed that call. Yay, memories. For the best coverage, switch to AT&T. More bars in more places. Get an exclusive quick messaging phone for $79.99 after mail-in rebate. Monday, a duel between two young guns. Brady Quinn looks to lead the Browns back into contention, while Trent Edwards is out to rally the Bills back to their winning ways. ESPN Monday Night Football, Browns-Bills at 8.30. Coming up after the game on SportsCenter, showdown in Foxborough. We're live in New England for full post-game reaction the moment it's over. Plus, the head of Jay Billis freshman class and Midnight Madness in Major League Baseball. Sports Center next. Uh, clubs come and go on South Beach, but Mangoes endures. I, I, I've been there. I wasn't doing that one out there. Uh, <laughs> strong Latin flavor down there on Ocean Trail. We used to cover Toronto. I had to, we had to make sure we were seeing if Gino was out on the South Beach, a little Clevelander. We're not, we're not telling any of your South Beach old stories. <laughs> James, you can just... What happened back in the, uh, 90s, in the 80s and 90s, 90s stage there. There's Chris's fans oh, again. Stop There's it, Chris's stop fans it. Again. Enough of that. <laughs> hey, you know, Miami's kickoff coverage guys have been excellent tonight. Roberts is a guy who's had back-to-back -back games with returns over 50. He's been held in check. They boot it very short. This would be by far the best field position for the Hokies in this half as Devin Perez takes it to the 32. And we check back with Reese. All right, Chris, this week's AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week, Graham Harrell. How about these numbers you dial up? 40 of 50 for 456 and six touchdowns against Oklahoma State. You can vote every week. Text the word vote to 51234 on your AT&T wireless phone. And when you vote for the Player of the Week, you can also enter for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game and maybe haunt one of those establishments that you guys just showed us. <laughs> All right, Reese, here's Taylor firing downfield. We see those gaudy numbers from Graham Harrell, and now for something completely different. That was the first pass attempt for Tech in this half. That's only the seventh play they have run after halftime. Haven't had the ball, and it's been very conservative. Now you think they got to open it up. And, and you don't see the enthusiasm. I mean, when you watch, I'm watching for body language. Yeah. You know, maybe Aaron can get over on the other I mean, side. Like the, good, on the dance floor there in Mangoes? That, that, or? That, 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 that's body language there, yeah. my friend. That's, that's dancing with the star stop. But there's just nothing going on in third quarter. There's no rhythm with this football team. Uh, it's been moving backwards. <laughs> the backwards tango for the Hokies as the Hurricanes have been, been bringing the pressure. And now a whistle and a timeout spent by the Canes on defense. Timeout. Miami. Their first charge timeout. And they saw something that concerned them. Timeout. They'll spend the timeout and we'll take a break. For the price of a night in, how about a night out? Introducing Applebee's two for 20 menu. Full on dinner for two people for 20 bucks. Choose one great appetizer to share and two amazing entrees, like our juicy seven ounce sirloin, our signature double crunch shrimp, and so much more. So take your wife or your sister. Sure, take him. It's Applebee's two for 20, and it's the best meal and the best deal in the neighborhood. versatile Hummer ever. 
If you plan on building, furnishing, or remodeling your home, or you're just tired of paying retail, don't spend another dollar. Now, you can enjoy an incredible selection of top quality name brand products priced up to 50% less than retail. Take the first step towards saving hundreds or even thousands of dollars on nearly anything for your home. Call for your free Direct Buy Insider's Guide to Buying Direct and learn what retailers don't want you to know. Each full color page of the Insider's Guide is packed with powerful information. Discover some of the hundreds of thousands of products available from over 700 name brand manufacturers. Everything, including furniture, cabinets, appliances, flooring, lighting fixtures, and so much more, all without retail markups. At Direct Buy, you can't afford to miss this valuable opportunity. Call the number on your screen now to get your own Direct Buy Insider's Guide. You'll also receive a visitor's pass and map to the Direct Buy showroom nearest you. The sooner you call, the sooner you'll be buying direct. So call now. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. And in part by Hummer, like nothing else. The Goodyear Blimp high above Dolphin Stadium. Football's rough. Your commute shouldn't be, so get there on Goodyear Silent Armor Technology. Macho Harris is in the offense right now. Here's a guy that's got to have some playmaking ability. Find a way to get the guy the ball and do something different. That was a diversion. They tried to run Taylor up the middle, and he's dropped for a loss. Sean Spence and Stephen Wesley, who's a veteran and a sophomore defensive end. Miami right now just playing at a different intensity level than Virginia Tech, and this front seven have been playing out of their minds in the second half so far. The way this defensive line is playing right now, Craig, reminds me of all the great Hurricane teams from the past. They talk about the Russell Marylands, the Cortez Kennedys. This is what they're looking like right well, now. Look, look how consistent, guys, they've been. 15 straight. They've gotten to 20 points. They're not going to get there tonight unless they turn things around quickly. That's why I'm saying Macho Harris up the top left. Somebody that's a playmaker's got to get the ball in their hands. Taylor on third and 13. Takes off. Won't get there. And Sean Spence, the true freshman linebacker from here in Miami, kind of safety size and safety speed, but he's playing linebacker. Watching Spence in the spring. Now, you remember, a lot of these Miami Northwest High School guys, they came in in January, early enrollees. A number of them at spring practice. And Spence, really the beneficiary of having that time in the spring to develop his skills. They say he's fearless. Coach his son, so he's a smart football player. What a big future for this team. A year or two away, perhaps some big things. Bowden gets it away. Collier tracks it down at the 22, and he'll be dropped right there. So Miami will try to chew some clock and protect this lead, as we remind you that Alabama takes on Mississippi State. And Sly Crooms Bulldogs have gotten the Crimson Tide the last couple. In fact, Bama hasn't scored an offensive touchdown against Mississippi State since 2004. Give them some defensive touchdowns to win games. That Bulldog offense has been struggling so much. And John Parker Wilson says that's a mission. That's an embarrassment that they haven't scored an offensive touchdown. And I think they're very keen to do so. Playing their first home game as a number one team in a couple of decades. This is Jabars James. Running left and JJ about a 10 yard gain. James and Cooper are a good tandem. They haven't had these guys healthy together since the Florida game. Yeah, it's, it's such an advantage for Miami's offense to have both these guys healthy because now you can wear defenses down longer because you got fresh running backs taking turns spelling each other. He wants his guys to protect that football, Craig. Okie's quarterbacks have had a long night. as a guy that had 800 yards as a as a freshman step back a little bit as a sophomore was looking for a you know, really big junior year maybe a, a contract year as all running backs think of when they become juniors hasn't happened for him 
now seems likely to return. Yeah, the high ankle sprain, though, that's really set James back this yep. season. Cooper's picked up the pace where he dropped off. But, you know, you've got a defense right now that, that's got to step up. Remember, Virginia Tech controls their own fate and destiny in the ACC. Went out, they're there. Not for long, maybe. I understand. The clock is a ticking on them. This is Marv, another design run, and he's hit hard. Slammed to the ground at the line of scrimmage. The world's Darian Porch. You know, and again, if Miami wins, then North Carolina's in the driver's seat. Well, Carolina actually controls the destiny. They beat the Canes and, and Butch Davis and company a key game against Maryland. But if Carolina should lose and Miami wins out, the Canes would jump up here and win the division. You realize the last time you played with a telly this afternoon? <laughs> you, yeah, you but you, 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 you broke the thing. You well, but I was button. trying to fix your mess up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you see Boston College visiting Florida State tonight, or a Saturday night. Who's more computer literate between the two of us? Well, that's, a, that's not saying much. Marv is hitting drops. Off the edge, Mr. World's playing hurt. That, that bum shoulder to snap it back into place and get it to the quarterback. Is Robert Marv again showing his inexperience. Again, you're playing Bud Foster's defense. You know they're going to bring one more player than you can block, so the clock has to go off in your head right now. You're Robert Marv. It's third down. Free rusher off the edge. Ball's got to come out. I wouldn't leave him unblocked if you were to choose a guy. No. no. Do something to get a man out there on Jason Worlds. He's a sack will have all year. Macho Harris tries to track down the Bosher punt. Trying to make something happen. And he'll lose a yard in the return. Game special teams have excelled tonight. 42-yard kick. They lose a couple. And there is Marcus Robinson. Didn't have a sack coming into this game. He's got the hat trick tonight. You know what? And watching the performance of Robinson and how tenacious he is, this defense, all from four, man, the way they played, Jesse, and the linebackers really benefiting from their performance up front. Well, we talk about the youth on this football team and how bright of a future this squad has because they have these young players that are being forced into game action early, getting their reps in big-time environments. This, this case team could be serious in a couple of years. Tyrod Taylor. Drops back, takes a shot downfield, and has a man. Tyrell Roberts drops it. He had Chevis Grant beat, beaten for a touchdown and just dropped it. We talked about earlier how it was Miami that wasn't being able to take advantage of their big opportunities in the passing game. This is just a beautiful throw from Tyrod Taylor to his true freshman receiver, Tyrell Roberts. He just runs the double move, the curl and go. Is able to get by the corner, Chavez Grant. Ball placed perfectly in his hands. You're down now nine points. You cannot throw that football any better, Craig. Mm. Taylor, obviously frustrated. They're just 60 yards passing tonight. They pitch it to Evans on the option, and he'll fight forward for about eight. You know, it, that is not not that there's an excuse for Roberts. It's a tough catch. The ball's wide, you know, down there. You see it coming. You know you're wide open. It's hard to catch. You got to make the catch. But this offense has gone nowhere tonight because Evans hasn't been able to run the football. And Why is that hard to catch? Because, Chris, you're sitting there, and all that's going through your mind is, yeah, I've got it. It's a touchdown. As catches go, that wasn't that hard. Really. Oh, it's a killer. It's the worst one to have to try to catch. Talk to the quarterback. Don't tell Tyron I'll tell you that. <laughs> How about tell Frank Beamer that? Third and three. I've been booed off the field, my friend, one time. I dropped one terribly like that. Taylor, pressured, gets away, gets the first down. Still alive, and he'll dance out of bounds at the 49 of Miami. Ryan Hill forced him out. So a crucial conversion. They probably were going to have to go for it if they didn't get it anyway. Well, how about the first tech first down in this half? Yeah. How about that? that? That's telling you right there. But Taylor showing that his ankle's not that bad. Well, Tyrod Taylor's going to have to take this game upon himself. I think if Virginia Tech wants to get back in this thing and win, he's the best athlete on the field right now. And if Bob Tech's going to pull this thing out, Tyrod Taylor's going to have to make plays in this quarter with his arm and his legs. Saw Roberts who made the drop, appearing to favor his shoulder, and now the Hokies with the play clock running down will have to burn their first time out. If they're going to get back in it, they might need all of those timeouts. 
621 to play. During the Hummer Red Tag event, when you see some red, you save some green on all 2008 and 2009 Hummer models. Like the all-new H3T, the nimble, tough, mid-size pickup with full-size capability, or the rugged mid-size H3 with lower annual fuel costs than many SUVs. During the first-ever Hummer Red Tag event, the price on the tag is the price you pay for incredible values like this. Visit your local Hummer dealer. They wiped away all the grittiness and humanity that the city ever had. I'm going to show them that they missed a spot. Looks like a sandwich with the taste of a prime rib dinner. Quiznos' newest prime rib, only $3.99. Real prime rib, the king of meats. Slow roasted to bring out all its tender and juicy flavor. Sliced thin with an extra layer of prime rib, piled high. All toasted to perfection on rosemary parmesan bread. Real prime rib for only $3.99. Only at Quiznos. Mmm, Quiznos, love what you eat. Seat movers, that's what you'd call us. We'd buy seats up in the nosebleeds and then move down. We'd look for no-shows. Who sometimes did show. Soda spillers. That is gonna leave a stain. Go, 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 and then go. we'd swoop right in for the perfect seats. Hello. And goodbye. Want great seats? Your city card could get them. And now, every time you use a participating city card, you're in it for a chance to go on a three-city tour with Nickelback. Want the story of a lifetime? Your city card can help you write it. Midway fourth quarter, college football prime time presented by Applebee's. Hokies have the football down by nine. This is Miami Hurricane football, vintage 2008. All the big playmakers in the past, all the glamorous, high-scoring offenses. This year's team plays some defense, makes some sacks, kicks some field goals, trying to get to a seventh win. Taylor keeps it. He'll take a shot downfield again, goes into double coverage. And it's incomplete. What's been so impressive to me, Miami has been able to make Virginia Tech one-dimensional. They have not been able to run the football at all. Right now, Darren Evans, only 42 rushing yards in this game. You see now Tyrod Taylor just trying to take a chance to his true freshman, Jarrett Boykin, in double coverage. But you start throwing balls like that, 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 that shows me that you're getting into desperation mode a little bit. But, but Bill Young, defensive coordinator, doing a great job. But what about Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator? Do something okay, different. Get to shot. the middle of the field. Find your tight end. Do something that's well, not They tried like to go down the field twice. They tried to throw deep. Shorten it up. Let's go underneath. Let's get something to tight end. Somebody in the flats, maybe. Tight ends don't have a catch tonight. Taylor gets away. This has been a, an effective play. And he tight ropes down the sidelines. He'll have a first down all the way to the 30. This is why Tyrod Taylor is so well respected by this coaching staff and he had the good practice at the end of this week practice week but the way he makes people miss in space -hoo -hoo. well did you see Tyrod Taylor's eyes right there in the pocket he was not looking at coverage he was looking for the first seam up front and then he was hitting it so that's basically their middle the short passing game that I was talking about you know they're getting it done there and then throwing the home run ball up down the field. Taylor now becomes the leading rusher for the Hokies. 50 yards. He got 19 on that one. Macho Harris is in the game, and he's got the football. The corner tries to get the corner, but he can't. Sure tackling by JoJo Nicholas limits the game to just three as we check back with Reese. Chris, our Dr. Pepper conference update takes us to the Big 12. It's been grabbing all the headlines this year. Number three, Texas going to Lawrence to take on Kansas Saturday at 1230. Texas has tied Notre Dame for second on the all-time wins list with 832. Get one more, and they will have won 10 games again. It will be their eighth straight 10-win season if they can get the road victory on Saturday. Yeah, they better be ready for that. Those Jayhawks in recent can score points for sure. He's... Macho Harris to the far right of the formation. Taylor's looking to the right, fires, and it is Harris. 
And the Macho Man making an impact on offense now dives to the 18. Well, we talked to Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator at Virginia Tech, and he said quite simply, look, our goal is to get Macho Harris five touches a game. Ooh. And that's his second touch now. You see why he's so versatile. He's able to line up a wide receiver. Great underneath running routes. Man, DeMarcus, DeMarcus Van Dyke just got spun around there by Macho. Inside of five minutes to play. He's looking to cut into this lead, and it's an Aaron pitch. Evans tries to track it down. He does so, but he'll lose big yardage. Boy, there was pressure on Taylor. He pitched it very quickly. Allen Bailey was right near the quarterback. Allen Bailey is a player that Miami believes wholeheartedly number 57 has a chance. He's a freak, 290 pounds, but a body with zero body fat, all out. And once he figures out defensive line, because he was a linebacker, yeah, right? Yeah, played linebacker last year. He is, it's been a slower learning process than what the coaches would have hoped for. But he's still had a lot of production playing D-line. They think he's going to be one of the greats. He lost six on the play. Taylor pumping. He'll take off again. Now he'll throw down the field and caught at the five-yard line. So Greg Boone, we said the tight ends hadn't caught up all, all night. That's the first one. And you know what? How smart was Tyrod Taylor? He set this defense up nicely with his legs and he's scrambling. Then he pulls up and looks down the field. Well, on the biggest drive of the game, Brian Steinspring getting the playmakers involved. Tyrod Taylor, Macho Harris, Greg Boone. Now you got a nice drive going. Need to capitalize here. You need seven points. First and goal, Taylor will keep it. Tyrod Taylor dives into the end zone. His second touchdown cuts the Cranes lead and finally something from the Hokies in the second half. What's so impressive to me about that drive there is this is an offense in the second half that just had no life, no energy. They come out on this drive, Craig. They just march this thing right down the field methodically. And, and you know what? The defensive line was non-existent there for a while, right? You got the O-line of Virginia Tech stepped up. Sergio Rinder there, the right guard, caving down the middle. It's also a drive that survived the long drop there. I mean, Roberts could have given them a big play. They didn't get it. Instead, it's Taylor running and throwing down the field. And we'll see if they try an onside kick. What do you think? Yeah, the lead yeah. is, is just two now, 3.28 to play. Well, we've, we've said it, though, haven't we, all year about this, this clock and yeah. at the end of the year? When, you're, when you get down inside that three-and-a-half mark, you, you know, that offense can just smoke you out there. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not so far against it. I'm They're not sure enough, What do you think? Would, I don't would, think you, would you kick it deep? No dancing around. Would you kick it deep or gamble the onside kick? I, I would kick it deep knowing that Bud Foster is my defensive coordinator. He's been playing good defense. We can get pressure on Robert Marv or Ja'Cory Harris. Plus, we got two timeouts. I know the clock rules are different. And how many times on Thursday nights this year have we seen these clocks come back and bite coaches that are down? I just think of Bud Foster is your team coordinator. I think I'd, I'd onside kick it. Kick I, it I, I, you know what? You're Would on you the road, and they're lucky to be in this game, truthfully. Virginia Tech has done nothing in the second half. They finally have some life. Maybe it picks up the defense over there, and you got to come out here, and you got to do something. I mean, you're on the road. Three and a half minutes, you take control of your field. Well, your offense just proved that they, they can make a drive and score. If you get the ball back, after watching what I just saw, this offense can take it down and score. Canes don't have any more than five guys up there. They, don't, they have not loaded the line with the, with the hands team. Well, those guys up there probably have pretty good hands, and it's Justin Meyer, the freshman kicker. We'll have to find out if he's going to gamble or, or put it on the defense to get the football back. And they kick it deep. This is Brandon Harris. And then the true freshman gets across the 20 yard line. Let's check with Reese. All right, Chris, time for a Sports Center right now. And the American League Cy Young Award winner is Cliff Lee. Not bad. Guy won 22 games. He had another comeback in his career. And he was a unit, or not a unanimous, but a runaway winner for the Cy Young. Sports Center coming up after the game. You can stay current of ESPN News. And they will get you up to date on the Jets and Patriots. About to go to the fourth quarter where the Jets have an 11 point lead on New England at the moment. Favre has thrown a couple of touchdown passes.
These things. So let's see if Bud Foster's defense can get the ball back to the offense. 322 to play. If he's have those two timeouts. You'd expect Patrick Nixon Shannon to be very conservative here, wouldn't you? Yeah, you have to be. You have to be, but so important for Virginia Tech's defense on first down to stuff and force second and long. Reminder about ABC's primetime coverage on Saturday. Most of you will see him right here in the ACC. It's up the road in Tallahassee. Boston College against the Seminoles. And Oklahoma State visiting Boulder. So those of you in the Big 12 region, 8 o'clock Eastern time. With Tyron, South Coast Airlines. with Tyron Taylor's running ability, what we just saw on that last drive, only being down two points, I think Robert Marv is going to have to make a play on this drive to win the game. And for Patrick Nix, I think if you just run it three times, punt, and then hope to hold up against Tyron Taylor, I think it's a bad deal. I think at some point, Robert Marv on this drive, Patrick Nix is going to have to put trust in that freshman quarterback and allow him to win the game tonight. You know, some would say if you're going to throw it, Jesse, you've decided you're not just going to kill the clock and run it to the first down. You know, that was the best chance to. First down. That's exactly. you got to do it here. Now you got second and nine. It's Cooper. Remember who has a fumble earlier tonight. He takes the pitch. He's got a bunch of blockers in front of him, but able to get only a couple of yards. And Brent Warren for the tackle. And then they'll burn their last time out. Boy, can't you see the difference, though, in the defense and the step in their, in their giddy up? I mean, this, it's so much different than what we've seen in this game. And we'll see what they do on third down. I mean, would you give your young quarterback, who has been a little bit interception prone at times this season, would you give Marv the opportunity to try to get the first down? Because now they've burned their timeouts. If they get the first down, it's just about over. That's right. I think if you're Patrick Nix right now, you're wondering, you're playing that chess match with Bud Foster. What's he going to do? Is he going to bring pressure like he has been doing on third down tonight? Or is he going to lay back soft and wait for Robert Marv to make a mistake? I think that's the question right now. I, I wouldn't be yeah. so shocked if Miami came out here and just threw a quick screen, quick screen the wide receiver, the just in the middle. high completion. If, if he gets tackled, doesn't get the first, at least the clock is still running. You get to burn time off. He breaks a tackle, gets the first down, maybe ices the game. We've seen now two weeks in a row we're on third and long. Third in any situation, Bud Foster is going to bring a lot of numbers inside. Inside's where the numbers are coming. In their last game, it was Harris, not Marvin, quarterback, when they had some clutch third down conversions on the big drive against Virginia. This time it's a third down play to try to choose some clock. Javaris James is in the slot. Empty backfield for Marr. Quick pressure. They fire it. It's complete. Johnson up. He dropped it. He tried to do that little curl screen back. They don't get the first down and they do stop the clock. So it, it doesn't work out well. And the Hokies will get this football back with plenty of time for Taylor. Here's the beauty of having a Macho Harris playing the boundary corner. He locks up with a freshman. And they're saying, hey, I don't care what you do to the wide side of the field. I got my best guy over here on defense that's going to shut down your guy here if you, do, if you do choose to come this direction. Bosher. Pretty good punt. And a fair catch by Harris. He falls to the ground and makes it at the 32-yard line. Just inside of three minutes to work with. Okies just need a field goal. See if Tyrod Taylor can pull it out. A 69 yard touchdown drive on their last possession after they had done nothing. Hadn't gotten a first down in the second half. And Dustin Keyes, the kicker for Virginia Tech, his long this year is 45 yards. And you're thinking Virginia Tech offensively trying to get the football somewhere near that 30 yard line. That's as far as they got to go. You know what? If you're the defensive line here, you stay at home. You force Taylor to beat you with his arm. That's a good throw. Boone has it. And the big guy fights for about eight yards. Cook on the stop. That's that middle of the field that I was looking for. You know, you, you've been throwing the ball deep, and now you put the pressure on the linebackers to cover at the six-yard range, and then that's going to open up Taylor's running. Taylor pressured. Pursued and chucks it away. The sack would have been disastrous, and coming up with pressure there was Josh Holmes. They rotate in fresh bodies. He's a third-string tackle. 
This is where that rotation really is going to benefit Miami again. they got a lot of young players, but they can rotate these guys, keep them fresh, fresh bodies. You're going to need them coming after Tyrod Taylor here on this final drive. And they hand it off to Dustin Pickle, and he stops short. For the change of pace, Marcus Robinson with those three sacks. A big tackle. They, they didn't have Evans in the backfield. And now it's fourth down. Clock is running in the ball game right here. Taylor has time and now runs out of it. Sack. And for the first time tonight, it feels like the Oral Orange Bowl. A sack and the crowd on its feet and roaring. And that should do it. Miami should win its fifth straight. Number 57, they call him the freak, Alan Bailey. The man shows up, he's 292 pounds, and when he gets on you, you're not getting away from him. Look, look how smart he is here. He does not grab the collar, let's go of it. Nice tackle. Bill Young on defense on that play challenged Tyrod Taylor. They played man-to-man -man across the board, challenged Tyrod to find the open receiver, and they got a great pass rush. To Miami defense, guys, at 18 sacks coming into this game. That's not a very big number. Six. Six tonight has to be the story of the game. Give a lot of credit to Bill Young's defense. They hold this Virginia Tech team to only 77 rushing yards. It's now the seventh time this year they've held an opponent to under 100 rushing yards. There's young guys on both sides of the ball. Much has been made of the freshman quarterbacks, young receivers. There's young guys on this defense. When you take a defense like this on the road, and we'll see in a week from tonight in Atlanta against a very different offense, you get a chance. And this team, you can see, is starting to believe. Especially on defense, they really do believe. Offense has got a ways to go. They're pretty vanilla. But the defense, and that defensive line tonight, too much for a far bigger, oozing kind of offensive line. And you got to salute one of those defenders. Marcus Robinson is our Wrangler five-star player of the game again. No sacks until this game. Three tonight, seven tackles. And this crowd, they like the big fancy plays, but they also appreciate great defense on their feet. They win it with just one touchdown tonight. Mr. Reliable, Matt Bosher boots three more field goals. And there's a whistle and a flag before the snap. They tried to get in there in the center and, and steal it. It's a feel-good win for Miami. They were embarrassed in Blacksburg a year ago, worn down by the Hokies. Prior to the snap, all sides by contact, number 91 defense. They had lost four or five to their, their rivals coming into this game. But they've spent some time here. Randy Sanders doesn't want to talk about 07. He says it's a whole new team. He wasn't talking payback against Virginia last game, nor against the Hokies. He, he sees 08 as kind of a, a separate entity. How about Miami now? Five wins in a row, getting that swagger back that we're used to seeing here. Very, very confident football team. Very young, confident football team right now. The final home game of the season, the night when so many past Hurricane greats are honored, and they they limit Evans. Shannon, Bill Young, his first-year defensive coordinator, the defensive veteran. Out of respect there, Brandy Shannon and Bud Foster shaking hands, but it's Miami walking off winners of their fifth straight. And we'll see if they can go on the road and win in Atlanta, which won't be easy against that option offense of Paul Johnson. Now, but he'll have some time to prepare for next Thursday, so it'll be an interesting game between Georgia Tech and Miami and the ACC. Now North Carolina kind of smiling and jumping up and down. Yeah, it's all in the Tar Heels now. Can Butch Davis win the division if the ex-Miami coach slips? We've got a tough assignment, I think, against Maryland. It's no gimme at all. And Miami could jump right back in there. It's an ACC game. It's close, of course. It's one in the final sack. 
for the ball game. Are, are, <laughs> those those not, are they not the Fowler group? That uh, is the, 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 the Blue Man group, the Fowler group. That game, it took longer to prepare than it did play the game, I think, than that <laughs> litter. Well, Miami is certainly not, you know, all the way back to you know, the dominant glamour team, but they're finding a way, and boy, this is a team coming of age. Hurricanes win it, 16-14, and they're fifth in a row. And we'll see them week from tonight, again, in Atlanta, against Georgia Tech. <laughs> Flip the sign over, Sports Center is coming up next. <laughs> ESPN News, it's Post Game Extra. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Greg James, Jesse Palmer, Aaron Anders, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Chris Fowler. I don't know if it was a glittery performance from the Canes, but it was a gutsy one, and they win it 16-14. <laughs>